We are the consequentialists. What's up, planet Earth? This oh, yeah. No. 
Well, hello there. Uh, welcome to the uh, pre-show of uh, the Latino Slant. My name is Polly, and uh, yeah, on Friday nights we get down with a little car geek karaoke. And as you know, uh, Robert Meyer Burnett is a huge Duran Duran fan, and um, they just dropped a new single. So in uh, in lieu of that, in honor of that, and the fact that I love Duran Duran so much and that we do karaoke geeks on Friday night for the pre-show. Why don't we get down with a little throwdown from back in the day, little karaoke of Hungry Like the Wolf. Doc in the city, night is a while. Steam in the subway, earth is a fire. Do 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 Yeah. Woman, you want me? Give me a sign. And catch my breathing even closer behind. Do 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 In touch with the ground. I'm on a hunt, I'm after you. I smell like a sound, I'm lost in a crowd, and I'm hungry like the wolf. Straddle the line, 
discord and rhyme i'm on a hunt i'm after you mouth is alive juices like wine and i'm hungry like the wolf i mean who doesn't love this song stalked in the forest too close to hide I'll be upon you by the moonlight side. High blood drumming and your skin is so tight. You feel my heat, I'm just a moment behind. We having fun yet? In touch with the ground. I'm on a hunt, I'm after you. Those high notes sent in a sound. I'm lost and I'm found. And I'm hungry like the wolf. Strut on a line. It's discord and rhyme. I howl and I whine. I'm after you. Mouth is alive. I'm running inside. And I'm hungry like the wolf. I hope you guys. Yes. Ha ha ha. You can't hear any music? What? Oh man. Can you guys hear? Oh, what? No sound. What is going on? What did I do? Running around, facing the sound. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh no! And I was like singing and acting like a fool. But I hear there's no sound. <laughs> What happened, Mexican Iron Man? What happened? <laughs> dude, well, dude, yeah. I left you for three minutes to go get some aspirin. I come back, and the production value has got a hell in a hand basket, as we say. <laughs> Tacos with hungry lime. Like the, hungry like the wolf. You hungry need to put like, like Mexican like song lyrics with it, you know? Well, look, you know, uh, you, you know, know I mean? look at people were were happy. Well, like Prince people. Andrew. You know, I made people happy. Well, you definitely made people laugh. <laughs> I mean, happy. I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, shit. I didn't mean it that way. I mean, you made people smile. Yeah, smile. Okay. That's All right. I mean. If if we're doing that, then we're doing something right. You know what I mean? You forgot to click the button that says sound, remember? On the, on the bottom left. Oh, it is infamous. So anyone that's new, anyone that's new, this is not an accident. This is a uh, boomer slant I attack every show uh uh those in the chat that are members to this uh uh channel know that i do that every time mexican iron man um well that's cool um you know we could you know well let's test really... it again do we need to i mean yeah we need to make yeah, sure we have well, sound on your computer for the show no well you know what i have i have another song and oh, I was going to save it, but, oh, you know, let me, let me rock it. Let me rock it. Yeah. 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 Let's what hurry you... up and rock it. Yeah. Yeah. We should do that right now, right now before the show starts. Yeah. Let's rock. Let's rock okay. it right now. All right. right. Now. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's all good. You know, let's Boomer test it slant. out here. They, we got to right. give the people what they want. The people are saying more cowbell, more poly, more cowbell, more poly, more cowbell, more poly. Okay, if you guys are happy with that, then I am good because you know it is Duran Duran, uh -oh. their first uh -oh. song. The boss is here. The big guy. <laughs> He's here. gonna enjoy himself. He's chill. He's chill. All okay. right. You're right. All Look, right. I have to press the share audio. All right, and I'll see you in a minute. Goodbye, Mexican Iron Man. And let's add this to the stream because this is a killer ass song, man. Maybe we could even say to all the. Uh, Robert Meyer Burnett fans, uh, you know, a community, community. This is metal. <laughs> all right, let me see. What do we got here? We got all right, here we go. Yeah. Can you guys hear this? Let me know if you can hear this. Give me a thumbs up. What did I do? What did, did I did I? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right baby let me know in the chat are we good meeting you with a view to a kill 
face to face in secret places. Feel the chill. Nice. All right. Good. Good. Here we go. Nightfall covers me. But you know the plans I'm making still oversee. I can't go high like Simon. Could it be the whole earth opening wide? Yeah. A sacred why, a mystery gaping inside. I love these words. The weekend's why. Come on, everybody. Until we dance into the fire. That fatal kiss is all we need. Dance into the fire. Two fatal sounds of broken dreams. Dance into the fire. I got it. That fatal kiss is all we need. Dance into the fire. Ow! <laughs> you know it, baby. A Latina to a kill. Here we go. Choice for you is the view to a kill. Between the shades, assassination, standing still. First crystal tears, fall of snowflakes on your body. First time in years. To drench your skin with lovers' roses stands. That's true. Oh man, I can't, I can't. I'm gonna go low. But a chance to find the phoenix for the flame. A chance to die. Come on, buddy. But can we dance into the fire? That fatal kiss is all we need. Dance into the fire. Fatal sounds of broken dreams dance into the fire. The fatal kiss is all we need. Dance into the fire. When all we see is a view to the kill. Woo! All right. Everyone's here. Let people know what's up. We're gonna start the show. We're gonna get some little Del Castillo going on right after. You are watching the Latino slam, everybody. Here we go. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Slam. Yeah, but is this the unplug version? I don't know. I think I think it's the unplug version. All right, power, let's go. All right, listen, y'all, just go ahead and let the guest play. Come on, jeez. That's better. Crack up. Francia, Argentina, Brasil, todo el mundo ahí. Le mandamos un, un buen abrazo y un beso a todos ahí, a ustedes.
So, um, welcome to the Latino slant, and it's all Pumpkin's fault, or her, to our thanks, her hindsight. She left us, me and Mrs. Slant, a year ago today, and you know, it would have been easy for me to say, no, Robert's going to be on the show, it's good times, but... To all the people from the Burnett work and all the Slantinos know what a prolific dude RMB is. One of the things he says was that we're all gonna die. We're all in this together, man. And I just want to uh, give a little memorial to my dear pumpkin and not use my words, but the words of uh, Mrs. Slant, Romy. And she said this almost a year ago today. I made a pact with God when I adopted this little baby girl. If he only gave me 10 years with her, I would give her the best life she ever could imagine. We both honored our pact, and Tuesday morning, almost 10 years to the day, Pumpkin passed peacefully away. She was surrounded with so much love, and it was, and, and it was a beautiful and truly honored the amazing life she had. Grief gave way to the most profound gratitude I've ever felt. And we are forever indebted to all of those who shared in Pumpkin's life. Those who knew her loved her fiercely. She was a boss. She touched the lives of so many it, with her spirit and character. She had the best friends ever. And thankfully, the best daddy came along, her pop-ups, who she adored and who loved her with his huge heart. She will forever be in our hearts. And her best friend, Ginger, is happy. Pumpkin finally joined, joined her on the other side. Thank you so much, friends, for all your love. And please, if you can, give your furry baby a treat and squeeze from Pumpkin. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, how about that for an, uh, for an intro? Robert Meyer Burnett, everybody. <coughs> Wow, I, uh, Polly, I was dabbing my eyes there, man. <laughs> I know. I, was like, I mean, first of all, I was singing "A View to a Kill" at the top of my lungs. <laughs> you know, today is Duran Duran Day. In Invisible came out. Invisible came out the first uh, single off their new album, Future Past, their first album in six years. Amazing. I love their last album, Paper Gods. I thought it was great. Elizabeth, my girlfriend, took me to see the Paper Gods tour down in yeah. Irvine. And uh, I like the song a lot. The, the new video was actually made by an AI. It, it is on YouTube. I saw your link, and then I was like doing the countdown because it wasn't live yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it didn't go live till 7 a.m. That's pretty good. I, I is... want to hear it again. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I saw them when I was 14 at the, uh, at, at, the, uh, at the Fabulous Forum. Oh, that would have been great. I was a kid. And I had I had I had hair where I could do that thing. You could still do it. <laughs> yeah, the forum. You know, I saw people. Like, I saw George Michael and Prince at the yeah. forum. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Latino slant. Finally, finalmente, hermano. Uh, uh, vatos I mean, locos siempre. <laughs> vatos locos forever, bro. Um, you know, the way we 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 first streamed was was officially was was pretty epic with the blood and blood out panel. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's just always a joy, man, to to see you uh, stream on your own networks. I mean, you're so busy, and you got a movie, you got this, you got that, and uh, you're finally going out to see movies as well. I know, you know, I've seen two. I saw on my actual birthday, I went and saw Army of the Dead at the Chinese. That was the first yeah. movie I'd seen in 15 months, and then Monday wow. night I saw Fast Nine at uh, the Burbank, which uh, can, you can't talk about yet, right? I can't say anything, but I can say what I tweeted. Okay. And uh, I, I said, let, let's, let me just put it this way. I said that um, Fast 9 jumped a shark, a chasm <laughs> bigger than the Grand Canyon. Wow. <laughs> I, and, uh, uh, I mean, I, it I, is a car movie. Yes. And I, I have to say that, you know, a lot of people, I call myself the Viceroy. Actually, I didn't call myself this. Somebody called me the Viceroy of Verisimilitude and I liked it. Like all the nicknames I have on my show are hung on me by other people. And yeah. I, I loved the Fast and the Furious franchise up through what I think is a great, the Fast and the Furious franchise is, is a, essentially a B movie 
franchise that's been given A-list budgets. You know, and the first movie is a re it's a remake of an old 50s film, and then it was kind of a riff on Point Break, Catherine Bigelow's Point Break. It's almost the same movie. Mm -hmm. But what I really loved about the first Fast and the Furious, I've, I've, we, I've talked to you before how when I first moved to L.A., yeah. I really liked the like the low rider subculture because we didn't have that in Seattle where I was growing up, and I really like Latino culture and 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 things like that. And what I loved about the first Fast and the Furious movie is it had all these different groups. You know, there was like the Asian group, there was the Latino group, yeah. there was the white cop who invaded all of their groups. You know, and and I thought it was a. I love the multiculturalism of L.A. I think that's one of the great things the city has. And it was sort of a celebration of all the different subcultures of LA and out there, their attachment to automobiles, whether it was motorcycles yeah. or cars and, you know, every, the street racers and all that. And there was something, there was just something I liked about it. And it wasn't, it who's wasn't. Been, who's been the director the last few years? Has it been Justin Lin? Yeah. Well, Justin Lin, this was his fifth movie. Now he directed. Right. St started with Tokyo Drift, which I loved. A lot of people, <laughs> I'm a Tokyo Drift apologist. I love it. So he did three, yeah. four, five, and six. And then James yeah. Wan directed seven. Okay. And F. Gary Gray directed eight. Okay. And so, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with Justin Lin, I, I remember he, he had a movie called Better Luck Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you talk about uh, a movie ahead of its time. You know, uh, Asian Americans in Montebello, California. You're talking about an L.A. experience. Oh, yeah. Um, I knew one of the actors in it. Uh, that was a good little flick, and that got him to where he's at. Well, you know, it's Sun Kang originated the character of Han in right. Better Luck Tomorrow, and Justin Lin brought him in. And right. basically, he's playing the same character in Tokyo yeah. Drift. Yeah, a little and, universe. And, You're right. I, I totally forgot that. Yeah, and then what happens is in Tokyo Drift, Han dies. You know, he dies right. at the end of the movie. Not, but then, not Han, everyone. Well, he died too, but this is totally different. No, this is Han Solo, soul like the city in South Korea. <laughs> right. Han Solo, he dies. And then this is the best. This is probably one of the greatest things in movie history that's ever been yeah. done. So Justin Lin's friends with Sun Kang. So he decides when he's directing Fast, well, Fast and Furious, which is the fourth one, and then Fast wow. Five, he decides to make them all prequels to, oh, Tokyo, to Tokyo Drift. Brilliant. So so episode the fourth movie the fifth movie and the sixth movie are all prequels to tokyo drift the third movie and then at the end of the sixth movie uh yeah it's the, at the end of the sixth movie we yeah. see in the post title sequence we see that it was jason statham who killed han Oh my god! So you know, I really tuned out. I have. I mean, I, I remember The Rock. That was he was introduced in five. Okay, and Vin Diesel beating each other up. I don't. You know, I I, was, I, 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 re I remember some of the badass cars, and that was. <laughs> no, the fifth movie is is yeah. the best. Okay, and, all right. And, I'm gonna I'm gonna see it just because of you recommended it. So you saw nine the other night. I saw nine the other night, okay. and it opens this week. It's already okay. doing gangbuster. It's opening in South Korea, in China, yeah. in Russia, wow. but it doesn't open here till the end of June. Huh. And I I let's just say I was not enamored of it. And <laughs> and it I dare say it was my least favorite film in the franchise, which was surprising because mm -hmm. I'm the target audience. And a lot of people that we saw it with, it was all critics, and a lot of people liked it. And one of the things that and I was trying to make this point on my own show the other day is that like i'm a big fan of action movies b movies there's a movie called stone cold that stars brian bosworth the former football player that's right did you don't tell me you saw that oh oh dude not only did i see it <laughs> i own it i love oh. stone cold where brian bosworth is a cop that goes and infiltrates this biker gang and lance henriksen plays the leader of the biker gang and it, that's and, pretty good william forsyth is his like major domo and it's all, I mean, yeah. I love B movies. Good B movies can be great. They can be just as entertaining as the most expensive studio feature. And a lot of movies like Stone Cold, people just laugh at because Brian Bosworth is in it. But it was directed by Craig Baxley, who's an incredible stunt coordinator. And I've always maintained that 
what makes action movies great and what makes especially car chases always exciting if they're done well is we've all ridden in cars. We all know what it's like to drive in a car. So if a car like in To Live and Die in L.A., if William Peterson drives up an on-ramp and enters a freeway in the opposite direction of traffic and is driving straight into traffic, we know what how insane that would be. So, mm -hmm. so we as the audience, we're like, oh my God, he's going against, against the traffic on, 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 with and the LA traffic going 65 miles an hour and he's going straight towards it, into it. So we, our adrenaline is pumping and we know how amazing that is. Even when you're in downtown, like a city and you're in downtown LA and you're racing, if there's a car race and you have to go around corners, just how dangerous it can Ooh, be at speed. Yeah. So that's what makes car chases exciting. Like when William Friedkin directed The French Connection, and it was a groundbreaking car chase, he actually stuck the camera on the front grill of the car. So you're not even seeing yeah. the car. You're just seeing the car's point of view as the car is careening underneath this elevated train. And it's... Yeah, it's the L. Like, I remember like, that. I remember yeah, and you're L. like, oh, my God. And and yeah. that's what Then you see the cuts of Gene Hackman. Yes. Yeah. yeah just like that. Well, yeah. What, what's happened... And the Fast and the Furious franchise did a really good job of of showing us great car chase action and the thing about fast fives they go down to brazil and they there's a bank heist and these two cars have to pull a bank vault <laughs> i remember that through through the streets and and those cars could never that. yeah they could never drag something that heavy but yeah. it's okay you you still believe it because it's still actual cars on real streets and then then this seems so silly to say but with fast six, seven, eight, and especially nine, they lost the reality. It seems so silly to say, but but the grounded nature of things like car chases, suddenly cars could do anything. People could people could jump off one car, fly over a bridge, land on the hood of another car, and everyone's fine. And and it started to lose me. And by the time <laughs> you get to the eighth one, they're outrunning nuclear torpedoes on the ice, you know, in the Arctic and wow. things. It's just it's so right, let me let me ask you one more question about it and then I'm gonna I then I have my list of questions for oh, you. Oh yes. Um I know like I'm like kind of engrossed now. Is it is it like the reunited cast? Is Rodriguez back? Is J Jordana Brewster back? Of course oh, Paul Walker passed away, but everyone is back. <laughs> Every and, and and people there's no. there's two there was two I'm not going to say who they are, but there are two people I was very surprised to see show up if you're a fan of the franchise. The problem is the movie is so far removed from any reality. Yeah. It, it, there's, it's so, and, and it lost me, you know, even from wow. the, there's a, there's a flashback scene, but there's an opening scene with outlandish action. I'm like, I don't believe a minute of what I'm watching. And if you don't believe, if you don't believe yeah. it, you can't everything if there's no stakes and it's just all it's a it's a roadrunner cartoon. And, yeah, I mean, and, you're right. You're right. I mean, if you know, we'll we'll accept and forgive most things as long as, you know, the actors believe what they're doing and there's a nice, believable little story. We're in it. It doesn't take much for us to stay hooked. No, and, and also, like, in Fast Five, there's a car heist where they steal these cars from inside a train. It was like a train robbery. and But the thing is, the way they set it up and present it, yeah. you believe what's going on. And because they're on a train, they have to get the cars off the train. Yeah. And there's people they're fighting on the train. All of it, I mean, it seems silly to say which this. One, which one? <laughs> now we're in a full deep discussion. All right. I, I know. I, but it, what, real fast, which one is the one where the Rock and Statham go to Samoa? Okay. That's, that's, that's. <laughs> I saw that's, that one. That's. Fast and the Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. So that's not even in the nine movie. It's it's actually, it, it's a side story about Hobbs and Shaw. So now and, this conversation sounds like, hey, Paul, I have these great ideas for these movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because, again, I think that yeah. movie had a lot of outlandishness in it. Yeah. And and one of the things that I really liked growing up, and a movie like Stone Cold has this, or there's a... Mm -hmm is that they didn't have CG. They didn't have ways to like remove wires or if a car gets catapulted into the air by some kind of a, a, a some something, they couldn't paint it out of the frame yeah. using CG. So they had to do it for real. And now they're not restricted by physics. 
<laughs> so, so they can do anything that you want. But by doing that, for me, the thrill is gone because it's all artificial. And I mean, I know movies are all made up, but you know, when you think about the great action scenes, like mm -hmm. in Terminator Two, yeah. when Robert Patrick is in the the semi, oh. you know, and flies off the bridge into the L.A. River, and his fight is following john connor on the and and, and the t800 mm -hmm. arnold mm -hmm. on the motor on the motorbike mm -hmm. and you see this thing careening and it's this gigantic behemoth and it's coming out this little motorcycle yeah you know what that's like because it actually is happening so as an audience member you're watching you're like oh shit they're never gonna make it well, you know and that's the what film gets work, you going. Though, the film work of camera there's something really oh. like just like very with that with that because i know those landmarks uh you know oh yeah it, it's real time, you know, the stunts and, and the and the cars and the trucks. Oh man, that was that was a killer movie. It's still still the best one. Yeah, and Cameron, um, Cameron really knows, you know, shooting, understanding how to build an action sequence through each shot. And that's like going from wide shots to medium shots to point of view shots to close-up shots mm. to the shots of the weapons being cocked or whatever. He really understands the mechanics of how to get an audience um, immersed in a scene like that. He's one of the best there there has ever been. And he totally understands yeah. how that works. And not a lot of people do these days because so many action scenes are built uh, by effects artists. So there, there's a lot of what are called pre-visual artists, previs artists who create action scenes. They'll read the script and they'll use storyboards and they'll actually make mm -hmm. little animations and they'll put them all together. So then the director will come in and look at this like finished version of a scene and go, yep, that looks good. Let's do that. And so the, please tell me you liked uh, Alita. I loved Alita. I loved Alita. Uh, and I, you know, it's funny to me. First killer, of all, I think, uh, killer movie came yeah, out the I, same week as Captain Marvel. Yep. Yes, it did. Ugh. And I, I, you know, Alita was, uh, it was a, it was a passion project for James Cameron for years. Yeah, yeah. And then he turned it over to Robert Rodriguez. I, I thought he, I thought uh, that he really knocked it out of the park. He I knocked mean, it out, bro. There's he was a, at the, he's at the height of his powers on that one. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm again, bro. I'm so, so honored you're here. Uh, Are you kidding? It's been an honor to get to know you. Yeah, man. Um, let's say hello to some people in the chat, in particular to our newest uh, member, which is a really strong member of the Burnett Network. Black Philip Alvarez is a member. What's Coming at up? us from Texas, Texas. <laughs> from I think he's from San Anto. Uh, Dark Haster has a $2 super sticker. I don't know what it is. It is. Oh, it's a fox farting heart. Thank you, Darth Haster. Always, oh, you know the uh, where these come from are are just a trip. And, ladies and gentlemen, the president is here, the great Abu Nas, for a for a regalito of ten dollars. Sending my love to brother, my brother Polly, listening to this awesome show as I'm cleaning my kitchen. Uh, salute to Mr. Burnett as well. Love how he got Frederick Douglass on his mic. Yeah, I've always known that. I've always seen that that sticker. LOL, have a great night. President Abu Nas, you have a great night. It's always an honor having you come on by and watch the show and listen. Uh, one more, the great Mexican Iron Man. RMB, which is the <laughs> one of the two worst guilty pleasures? One, Fast Furious 789, or two, Manifest All Seasons, LOL. Oh, man. Okay, as everyone knows, I, I hate watch Manifest. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that. Yeah, we Manifest is a TV show. It suffers from what I call the impossible premise, meaning the writers came up with an idea for the show that sounded really good on paper. Like, this sounds yeah. great. And the network executive was like, that's awesome. Yeah. But there's no way you can ever satisfactorily answer the, the mysteries you set up. And so the show just gets more ridiculous as it goes along. And uh, it's a really good question. Is this I have on to... right now? Is this on yeah. air? Yeah, it's in its third season now. What's you know what this you know already the show is like R and B pitches Polly on these because <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking. About. Oh well, okay, you're gonna love this. Yeah. So yeah. I kid you not, this is the plot of Manifest. Okay. So a plane leaves the Caribbean with a bunch of vacation people, but people are on vacation from New York City, takes off from the Caribbean, it lands five years after it left. 
So it lands in That's New York cool. City. I like five that. Five years after it left. So everybody on the plane, they just think a couple hours have gone by. Right. They land and they've been reported dead and buried a long ago and they <gasps> lost at sea. So, so that's so cool. That could be cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, the okay. premise is cool. What you just told me is oh, great. That's, that's not all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to make a long story short. <laughs> yeah. So apparently everybody who is on this plane now starts getting callings where they see images of people they don't know. And for whatever reason, they have to go help Ooh. these people get over whatever tragedy or something is going on in their lives. So essentially, they're like getting messages from heaven or God or whomever. Go help these people. I mean, go help these people. It's, I want to see the show now. So, but here's here's the thing. <laughs> so here's my the reason I think it's like an impossible premise. Okay, not only yeah. did this plane go through time, but it then presupposes that there's an intelligence out there somewhere that mm -hmm. not only is is in, involved in the lives of apparently every single person in New York City and knows, and then it's picking like which person should be put in which other person's mind, like which of the people that were on the plane get chosen to like help this old lady or help this guy. Like there's there's so many things that have to happen for this to go on. You know, it presupposes like there's some cosmic switchboard somewhere and God's going, you know, I've sent these people through times. So they could go ahead in the future for five years. And yeah. now I'm going to, and then at the same time, You've got there's a government conspiracy that that's trying to figure out what happened. Like maybe there was a time travel experiment gone awry. Like who knows? So just add like eight layers to this story and none of it makes any like they'll never answer these questions because if mm -hmm. they were to answer these questions, the answers would never be satisfactory. And it just gets they bring in prophecies. They bring in alternate universes. Then they just decide. There are other people that weren't even on the plane. There's just like one guy that went out hiking in the mountains and then he went into a cave and woke up a year later because he too went through time. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. He wasn't on the plane. Eh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We just want to have I'm already. Yeah. I'm already done. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, that's just Hollywood now nowadays. Like for the last, you know, I say a, a few decades is that great ideas, great premises. Don't have, don't have a barely have a middle. No end. Um, to the new member to uh, Black Philip Alvarez and those who have uh, left some uh, who left some gifts uh, of uh, regalitos, this is for you. <laughs> How about a dance break, R and B? You want a dance break? You want to really laugh? Here we go, dance break, dancing. everybody. I mean, you know, you can't you can't beat that. No, no, no. I mean, we we all look and probably sound very silly when we're singing and dancing and having a great time. Um, anyways, uh, we're here with Robert Meyer Brunette on the Latino slant. My name is Polly. Um, you know how I got here as far as just in my little depression from losing pumpkin a year ago. And we were in what the first month second month of this pandemic no one in sight a lot of questions not answered at all because everyone was trying to figure it out robert um i started coming on here yeah and uh you know i found all you guys and it's it's been wonderful how did you take what you were doing before and how has it changed since then you mean on youtube yeah yeah because <clears throat> How what, did you? Yeah. What? What? What did you have before, and how? 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 Since with YouTube and the pandemic, how did? How's it grown? Oh well, yeah. It's been it's been amazing. So I started on YouTube back in 2015, wow. where a friend of mine named John Schnepp, who subsequently passed away, he was he he coined the phrase "sweaty," meaning meaning fans or sweaties, because when you go to the San Diego Comic Con and you're on the floor and you're packed in with a bunch of other people, you get all sweaty. So he called us all sweaties. That's but great. he asks me 
he calls me up and he says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this show on Collider called Collider. It was called, at the time it was called AMC Heroes. And it's a, it was a weekly show about comic books, comic books, comic book movies, everything to do with, with, with hero comic heroes. And so I went on and I did a show and it went well and he just kept bringing me back. And then I became a regular on the channel. And sometimes we were streaming at one point, we were doing a show every day. Wow. And yeah, it was cool. And we did that for three and a half years. And then he passed away. Mm -hmm. And I had started doing that show with another guy named John Campia who helped start this show. And then after John passed away, John Campia had gone off on his own. So John asked me after John Schnepp passed if I'd after come on his first, show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I started, I started streaming with him. And then John Schnepp had said to me that he's like, you know, you you have sort of this bubbly personality. You're always excited about everything. You should do your own YouTube show. And I was like, I I don't know what would that be. And so um, I talked about it and I thought about it and a lot of people had said something to me and, and my girlfriend, Elizabeth, she's like, you know, she bought me a, a microphone, this microphone um, for as an early Christmas present back in 2018. So in December, I started doing this live show and it was kind of, you know, I didn't really know. I It didn't really have a format. <laughs> it's like I just started talking and you need a format. You need some kind of a, like John, uh, I, John Campy, I still do his show in the morning and it's very structured. It's an entertainment news show. We cover four topics. Then we, we answer viewer questions. So it's very structured and it's very much of the day, but my show is more op-ed mm -hmm. and you know, when I was doing it, I was building the channel. It was good. You know, I was really enjoying it. And I, I have all my little catchphrases for the audience. Like I didn't want to call everybody, Hey nerds or Hey geeks. So I, I came up with my own term, imagination connoisseurs, you know, mm. and, and the, our community, the post geek singularity, because there's a yes. book by a guy named Ray Kurtz file called the singularity is near. And it's all about when AI achieves sentience, self-awareness. And I was like, well, geek culture exploded you know what i was I, when i was in the a kid i had no geek friends there was no internet i couldn't go find like my tribe i had lots of friends mm -hmm. and i had a, a really fun childhood and uh youth and girlfriends and played sports and all that but what i really loved was science fiction fantasy and horror and i didn't have any friends that shared this so i was really kind of in the closet about it i didn't want people to know just how much of a geek i was how mm -hmm. deeply immersed I was in all of this. <laughs> so, so now with everybody, the world changed and everyone's a geek. All the jocks are now watching Marvel movies, you know, and playing yeah. video games. And so I called us the post geek singularity, but Ooh, during I like the, that, yeah. And so that's I love that philosophy. Yeah. So I did that, but it, like you said, it really wasn't things really changed in the pandemic. Yeah. And, and I, I noticed, first of all, my audience started to get bigger. And like, I try and be positive about everything. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of YouTube negativity around the genre, the geek, the movie pundit space, because, mm. and I think the reason for that is because as a lot of our favorite things have been, um, uh, sort of acquired by larger and larger corporate entities, mm -hmm. that idea, it's just like records. It's just like the music business. The corporate aspects are almost diametrically opposed to creating music because you can't, there's no way to quantify inspiration mm. or, or art on a spreadsheet. It just doesn't work. Like if you need to go into a recording studio and you're going to lay down some rhythm tracks or you're going to lay down some vocal tracks, who knows how long that's going to take? You can't sit there and go, well, I have to do it in six hours and whatever we're going to make, we're going to make magic. I mean, sometimes you have to do some overdubs you have to play and you have to work it out you know how many bands have stayed in a recording studio for weeks or even months at a time to get an album right Just and right. you know Six a lot months, of people yeah. yeah with people with money are like well, what what's taking you so long it's like you can't you can't just sit there and put a time frame on creation of artistic creation who knows how long it's going to take mm -hmm. and and um so star wars doctor who a lot of these things are now the, the corporate interests, which means their product to be sold. I mean, things are always a product to be sold, but like George Lucas did not make Star Wars because he's like, I want to get rich. He wanted to make a movie. Of course, everybody wants to get rich, but he's making movies because he loves to make movies. You know, and I think any mm -hmm. filmmaker worth their salt is first and foremost informed 
by the passion to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. The same is true of a fine arts painter, a painter, a sculptor, a musician. You know, you have to have the muse and the, the desire to create has to already be inside of you because the music, any artwork that endures is because it was truly inspirational. You can't set out to make art that's going to make you a billion dollars because it doesn't work that way. You know, if you're making art of any kind simply to make money, I mean, sure, some people have, it's work for some people, but it's not sustainable. All of this comes from the heart. You I always know, think about that uh, that YouTube line uh, from the, the Fly back in the early 90s. Uh, every artist is a cannibal. Every poet is a thief. Overkilled in inspiration. They'll sing about their grief. Oh, so everyone, someone talks about that. You know, those guys are always so on point, man. You yeah. I, I, um, I, I, you're I, right, though, you know, because a lot of what, you know, what the slant does as far as, uh, you know, we don't talk about like, you know, the big Latino, you know, you know, uh, celebrities up, up, uh, you know, up that are already doing big stuff. I bring in a lot of independent uh, uh, Latino musicians filmmakers and actors who are now making it which is a treat yep. but you know this is their home you know this i call it their casita you know right sure. um so and speaking of that robert um we do i do have a little surprise for you Ooh, i like surprise right but before we do that let's get through these super chats real quick yeah and uh, we'll bring in a buddy of ours to uh announce this surprise uh steven otten rmb mexican iron man and i need to do a manifest live stream there's no way it can end well. <laughs> wow. Steven's got that right. <laughs> Man. I don't even think it began well. <laughs> well <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, the thing is now I'll go and see it and then I'll like come back and be pissed at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. When you watch yeah. it, it's not awful. You know, you're watching, you actually, you get into it. You know, I'll probably like, yeah, you know what? I think you know me and you got a lot of similar tastes. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, bro. But um, the, yeah. it's Courtney for nine ninety nine. Muchísimas gracias. It's Courtney. Um, this sounds like the story of my life, and I don't make any sense myself either. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, very nice. All uh, right, RC from the NYC, who is a member of the channel. Good evening, Polly. Good evening, Robert. Hello, Slantino Nation. Hope everyone is well, Robert. I'll be seeing your movie in Brooklyn next month. And actually, uh, we're going to get RC to do to do a little review for us. I would love that. You know, by the way, mm -hmm. Slantinos, what a cool... See, every every channel needs its catchphrases. And yeah. to be part of the Slantino Nation, man, that's it. That's right. where you build community, man. I, I want. Are you making shirts? Can I get some merch? Absolutely. Well, this is the thing, bro, is that you don't have to be a Latino to be a Slantino. <laughs> you know, I know that's the best part about it, man. Absolutely, yeah. That's what it that's... should say on the shirt. Okay, it's... all right. Well, well <laughs> I want a shirt that says the that. only one I got right there is the, the Wokoso t shirt. I don't know if you could see it in the dark. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a play on words. A Wokoso is, I don't know, do you know what Mokoso means? It's a booger head, oh, like a no. snot nosed brat. So okay. think of like think of like like your woke relatives that are like brats. Right, ah, you woke also. Psh. <laughs> I love that. All oh, right, I, do Ar that? I love that. Ar for two dollars. Hey, gents, makes me want to watch Millennium nineteen eighty nine. Uh, which, by the way, uh, it, that's a pretty goofy science fiction movie, but it was directed by Michael Anderson, who directed Logan's Run from nineteen seventy six, wow. which I grew up with. And it's actually based on a science fiction short story by a guy named John Varley. And that movie, even though it's goofy, I love Millennium. It, wow. it also has a goofy plot, which is about future humanity that's dying in a, in a polluted world is actually traveling back through time mm -hmm. and taking people that are fated to die in plane crashes yeah and they're taking them into the future because humanity has become sterile and they're taking them to hopefully save humanity in our future I mean, polluted it's world just amazing what what gets made <laughs> it really is i mean i love that stuff i love that 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 got made um uh member of uh the channel brandon wolf uh, uh glow go 13 go go yeah uh what is that glow go tell me it's uh go go 13 it's a it's a uh, manga Japanese animation character. Yeah, there's this like we, we, me and Clobber in times are talking about this. There's just some areas where 
like you go and talk with R R and B, or like you feel like an idiot because you don't. I I don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to dazzle him. Oh, with I'm my just Latino old, ness. man. I'm just old. I've been around, you know. Well, I'm fifty. Come on, come oh, on. I'm right behind you. Bro. <laughs> I'm right behind you. Um, yeah, but you're youthful. Ah, uh, Latino son, <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you as well. RMB, uh, uh, RM, uh, Robert R. Burnett is a great guest. I've learned a lot from all the recent interviews. Enlightening. Cheers, Polly. Cheers, mate. And uh, I think that's it for now. So let's uh, let's play this one video for you guys. Um, yeah, let's do a little La Bamba. Boom. <laughs> Um, ba, bam, ba, so. Did you shoot that? I did. Nice. I did. <laughs> I like that. No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> um, it was on our on our walks with our new dogs, our, our rescues, uh, in the neighborhood, and I'm like, oh my god, it's a live ser it's a live serenade, and I like put on my iPhone and just filmed it, bro. I loved it. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, before we bring on our 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 buddy and to make this announcement. I want to let all our members know that uh, if you guys want to come on and ask Robert a question, one question each, hit up Mexican Iron Man in the chat and he will make that happen. But right now we have one of the coolest dudes that I know, my brother from another mother, Tom from Midnight's Edge. <laughs> you oversold that cool part there, though. <laughs> What's up, man? Just a little bit. So, yeah, how bit, you doing, Robert? Bit. Been a little bit. How you doing? It's been good. I mean, I, you know, I've loved having Tom come on our midnight metal yeah. streams on the on and Andre awesome. came on one last weekend that was yeah. epic. Yeah, I heard. That I think he's listening to the whole thing yet, but I did. Uh, I did hear part of it. So yeah, yeah it's like four cool. hours long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't uh, even listened. I don't even remember half of it. Well, I like listening to those when I'm editing, so I don't have like the monotonous droning of the same thing over and over in my head. So it's like I have something going on in the background. But yeah, right. Yeah. So how you been, man? I've been good. Just just streaming. Yep. You know, I started my new midnight show that not midnight metal, but Rob's Nation's yeah. Midnighter. I know. Uh, Polly's been on it. <laughs> I would crack up at midnight, yeah. but during the week you said you're not gonna be uh partaking as much, or is that the deal? No, yeah, that's right. During the week, no, uh, all I drink is Pellegrino with nothing else in it. So because you gotta <laughs> you gotta give the 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 liver, you know, a rest, but you can't you right. can't do midnight. The problem is, uh, on Saturday I did a five-hour stream, and I'm sitting here drinking whiskey and and what and Pellegrino for five hours, and it's like, yeah. by the end I'm like as half asleep. Like, hey, that's sure, that's the correct how's the guy, everyone. It's <laughs> terrific. Thanks for being here. Well, they were saying in the chat, pink, pink, pink. <laughs> like uh, your skin was turning pink. Oh no, yeah, back then. Not oh, yeah, now, no, right no. now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I, I like. All right, it let pink, me. Um, but, I'm um, gonna take uh take my camera off uh and uh let me see how we can maneuver this yeah so uh we've already announced about it, tom but i don't know if robert knows i'm gonna give going him a on. little hint and see if he can figure out uh we we have a new uh well i don't know if we can call it a reunion yet we're still working on another person but we at least have mm -hmm. the main we have star. the main the main gentleman we have yeah. for a panel there's your hint <laughs> <laughs> no way yeah you're kidding no are you gonna get both of those esteemed gentlemen well we got we got, we got this he's we booked. got edward he's booked again and we we wow. just got another email that as far as like the time that he can commit you know uh but edward james almost and he said he'd love to do a stand and deliver reunion talk he will not do american me though <laughs> that's no but you know what the first time i saw uh edward james almost was it was in a movie called zoot suit ah that was an adaptation of, of a play and he basically plays uh, is it el pachuco is that el the pachuco. name el, el pachuco. pachuco yeah where he plays like the narrator and he's not he, it's all about the zoot suit riots in the 1940s and in los yeah. angeles and i remember seeing him and i just thought he was like the coolest dude ever, you know. And so, I saw the movie with my parents. Yeah, there, yeah, there it is. Nice, there bro. it is. Yep, nice. Is that a laser disc or is that an album? Born in a zoot suit, 
makes you look real root. Is that the, like the, a it's the soundtrack? Yeah, it's like the shining. Yeah. But it's yeah. The, so. Yeah. It was so funny because I'm uh, I'm friends with Lalo Guerrero's son, who's Lalo's been long past, and he that's his music, right? Right. His original music, Dan Guerrero. Um, I'm friends with on uh, Facebook, and Dan's talking about In the Heights, it's, and, and they're like, "Oh, it's the first all la <clears throat> mostly all Latino musical by a major studio." I'm like, "What about your dad's movie, dude?" Yeah. <laughs> the fuck. People forget. Yeah. You know they forget, and and not only yeah. is it is it uh, it's about actual uh, something that happened in the Latino culture in in Los Angeles. It's, it's about a real event. You know, and, uh, and yeah, and hey, uh, Mexican Iron Man is here. Hello, uh, Mike. Hola. His mic is muted. Oh, I, you popped me in like it wasn't even ready. I was talking the seventies and uh, Matt backstage. Hey, R and B. Okay. Hello, sir. How are you? Oh, you know, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. Yes, and you've been a big supporter, and I thank you so much for that. Oh man, I've been, you know, the, I, 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 I've mentioned a couple of times, I think, on a couple of streams, but I want to tell the people at Santino Nation. I uh, was one of those guys that that refused to watch uh, Next Generation <gasps> out of principle. And guess <laughs> what I watched that turned me around and made me watch all the episodes of the series? Guess what I watched? Come on, your uh, DVD back. You know the you know you know the work that you did of uh, of uh, you know all the interviews and all the that documentaries. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the first substance. That was the first material I saw. The Next Generation was your documentary interviews wow that that's and, that's a great honor then and i was looking at you and i didn't know who you were at that time and stuff and i was just like oh my god holy smack whoa hey oh wait what huh then oh okay i'll stop being a next gen is and <laughs> and i'll give this thing a chance and thank <laughs> heavens you did though what you did because i was already ready for the episode that i was going to be disappointed in you know they're, they're, you know like yeah <laughs> and 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 you really did such a good job and and I've now seen what I don't know every season like what I don't know at least four or five times now. I'm don't oh, get me wrong; it, it's still not my favorite. No, um, in fact, at this point in time in my life, it's maybe number three on the list, but still. I my, for me it is too. I the original series is my favorite, obviously. Deep Space Nine and is second, too. and Next yeah. Generation's third. Yeah, but thank you for that. Thank yeah. you, thank you for giving me that because that's a whole sci-fi universe that I just refuse to partake in. Just out of, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. You know how we were, right? then? You know how we yeah, were. Yeah, no, it's, 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 and there's a lot of people that were, you know, were like that. It's funny because what's interesting about Next Generation is it doesn't feel, it feels like it was made in a way like in the 1950s, even though it wasn't. Yes. And it, because it has yes. its own aesthetic. I mean, it's such a, yes. it's a very brightly lit show. Uh, and it's, it has it, a it feels like you're kind of, kind of a, a weird kind of vibe, kind of sometimes. Yeah, it really does. It does. And um, yeah, you know what, though? I got to tell you, ever since I've come to know you, you know, hot toys that we all collect, mm. um, they make these great die cast iron man figures all different you know oh. from all, all the different armors oh. they're they're the best toys ever made but i want to get one painted like your sombrero oh I my god get, i i want to <laughs> get one of the die casts like that they're four hundred dollars right but i want to get one and they just came out with one it's like all gold it's it's a it's oh. like an homage to the original iron man which, which is all one color mm. gold and yellow and have somebody some expert painter like take it to a somebody who paints like low riders yeah, for a living or something I think we can get and this get thing. it painted. It's, it's hot toys. I don't collect toys. Is that H O T T H A U T? What is that? It's H O T T O Y S. And you know, I can put. I'll put it in a private mm -hmm. chat. And uh, please it, do. It, they're so expensive, but they're the best. They're twelve six scale toys. So the twelve inches, but oh. they're die cast metal. They're so beautifully engineered. But every time I see your name, Mexican Iron Man, I'm like, I want an Iron Man Hot Toys figure, but painted as if it were. You know, either it looks like your sombrero or it, it looks Brother, like get this done. we're going to get this done and send it to you. Just an appreciation of all the work you've done and for, <laughs> for the stuff you've been doing with us on the shows. I mean, we'll get it done. Paul. Hey, Mexicans for sure can find somebody to spray paint anything. Well, so yeah. let's talk really quick for a minute before we bring in one of our members uh, about Eddie almost and standard yeah, this delivery. Is, this is amazing, dude. Like he we're going to do. He played uh, Jaime Escalante. Yeah, Academy Who's Award winning nom nom Academy Award nominated performance. Yeah, and he was, but that he was a real guy. It's based on a real teacher. Yeah, 
uh, he he passed away. What? I, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't, but I, I want to say not too long ago, but it could have been ten years. But uh, th that movie inspired a lot of people, including our buddy of Mexican Iron Man, to go to Stanford. Right. Well, you're calling me out. Yeah, I am. Shoot, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Yeah, so I was gonna. I was all set to uh, um, do Evergreen. God damn, I'm gonna get emotional. Uh, do Evergreen Community College and go to San Jose State, which is a fine school. San Jose State's a fine school, and. Uh, yeah, I saw that, and I went to my counselor, and I was like, we got to change everything. I'm going to go for it. And I filled out applications to Princeton, Harvard, Santa Clara, Stanford, Yale, uh, Brown University, Columbia. I almost went to Columbia. Got into most places, not all, um, but, um, yeah. And and then being in, being a California boy, I just couldn't imagine leaving the state. So, yeah, that right. movie, literally, literally seeing that movie, I got so wrapped up. I actually yeah. sat in the theater and I went back, bought another ticket and watched it again and waited the 25 minutes till they cleaned the theater and I went right back in. I think it was 1980, was it 88 or something? 89? Like um, 89, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, 88? Yeah. Yeah. And your, your mic's off, Tom. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, you said 88. it anyway. I think it's either 88 or 89. I think 88 yeah. sounds about right. So yeah, we like to hear Tom's voice. And, He's got a great voice. <laughs> I changed everything and then boom. And then I got in and I, my life's never been the same since. And uh, who would have known? I mean, who would have known? So who, who else can we get? If this is going to be a reunion panel, I mean, we got to try. We got to try Diamond. and get Lou. I mean, if anything, we got to get Lou. So like that to me is like a, a, a got he seems He seems pretty in, in the in the mix. You know, we just, uh, me and Tom just uh, uh, did a stream about his uh, New York Times um, interview he did last week. With Louis, with Luis Valdez, who yeah. did Zoot Suit as well. I mean, he seems like he he'd be open, kind of maybe like Louis T Taylor was and Ben Bratt. Like once you get one, you know. Um, no. Well, you know, Paula, you point out something. What was interesting about the blood in, blood out thing? Because of COVID, people are so used to now speaking on Zoom, mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to reach out to people now, and they're much more, I think, amenable to come in and talking on situations like this because they don't have to leave their house mm -hmm. they don't have to go anywhere they don't have to feel threatened and if they do, mm -hmm. don't like it they can just disconnect so i was really surprised at our i thought that that blood in blood out reunion well, yeah last a half an hour or something and it it was like like uh, uh jesse stayed for what four hours or something it was epic man i mean <laughs> it, it, it was, doesn't even no, and I thought, it. like, when I reached out to Taylor Hackford, I was like, listen, if you want to come in for, like, 10 minutes, and, you know, I don't know if you're busy. And he was there for two hours. I, I, couldn't, yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. And then Helen Mir and his wife pops in. Hello, I've been listening to your stream. It's very informative. I'm like, it's Helen Mirren. Well, yeah. and she was popping in more than once. <laughs> yeah. I, Paula, you noticed that, too. Like, she kept. Yeah, she kept. She kept saying, oh, excuse me. Like, she was like, yeah, she was doing that all. Like, <laughs> and then finally, I kept she seeing had it, a like, moment. Is there somebody in the background? Who is it? Because she would just quickly come in and just do, like, whatever until she finally just goes, hello. And then she's like, well, oh, shit. And then <laughs> Romy got pissed at me because she's like, you had a you had a stream with, with Helen Mirren, one of my favorite actors, and you didn't fucking tell me. It's her, uh -oh. Frances McDormand, and, uh, and Angela Bassett. And yeah. she's got to act with Angela Bassett. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah cool. But she wants to meet those. You know, I was like, well, sorry, hon. It was like, it was like. <laughs> well, we got to talk to Taylor about a few other things anyway. So I think, I think sometime we'll hopefully be able to set something. She'll be able to maybe take five minutes if she's around. Maybe we'll we'll have to see what we can do. Look at this, Rosanna De Soto. It doesn't yeah. even matter where they're at right now. Oh, that yeah. would be interesting. The the director. Yeah, yeah, if we can get the director too, that'd be great. Like those three would be amazing, even if we can get Lou yeah. just for a little bit. Um, but again, you know, Polly and I have been talking about wanting to do a La Bamba reunion forever as well. So, um, yeah. But yeah, 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 and it kind of goes all in that, that time frame of all those, those string of movies that were just mm -hmm. kicking ass. Well, you know, it's interesting too that, um, that Edward James almost like he starred in Miami Vice, yep. You know, he was Castillo, and uh, he was like, there was nobody cooler on TV. I mean, Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas were cool, yeah, but Castillo was even cooler than yeah. they were. Like, he had to be. And 
I mean, I don't know if you guys remember the episode with like the ninja and the samurai where he was fighting oh, the. Oh, that's <laughs> right! Didn't he take his shirt off? Yeah, something like that. He's got the he's got the ninja sword, and he's I don't even remember. I've got the whole series. That Actually, is. Is that on Blu-ray oh, yet? The series? Yes, or? I have okay. the whole series on Blu-ray. Because I remember it more from Blade Runner, but yeah, because I was a little yeah. young when my yeah. device came out. But yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, well, I remember him in Chips. He had a role in Chips. Yeah, in Chips. Yeah. Poncherelli. He was like, "Hey, man, you're one of us." <laughs> He's like, "Don't give me that body of bullshit." <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, I think. Well, you know what? Before I. When These is this going to happen? Chat. Um, we're working on it. Any Thursday, like we're we gave them Thursday. Oh, yeah, I just got the email back. Um, he's he's free most Thursdays. We so. really just got to get uh, try and get a hold of Lou is what it boils down to. Yeah. Um, let me. Um, I I think this is new. Um, so. from from member Brandon the Infinite Wolf. Uh, now Tom is here. It is amazing how many people I I found I follow interconnect. It is great. Edward James almost is awesome. Mexican Iron Man in the house. Yes, thank you, yeah. Brandon. Thank well, Polly so is actually works with us over at Midnight's Edge. Uh, he is, uh, I, I would guess, for lack of better term, you're like the 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 senior editor, or whatever you want to call it, over at uh, Midnight's Edge Espanol for one, and yeah. uh, or whatever you want to, because I mean, you That's just decide whatever comes on. I mean, it's yeah, you. you <laughs> You're the we're, the curator, everything. Yeah, we just we just launched uh, yeah. not even two weeks ago. I think we're up to like 330 subs. So uh, yeah, let's 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 throw that in there. Uh, uh, any of the wrenches that are there, uh, thank you so much. We're here with Robert Meyer Brunette, my buddy Tom from Midnight's Edge, Mexican Iron Man. Um, it's Courtney, another member. I also hey. want to say happy birthday, Mister Burnett. Yes. Yeah. By the way, we share the same birthday. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. A lot of people shared that birthday, but yeah, it was uh, great to have. Uh, yeah, you can back in time and find out what was getting, what was, what happened that our parents were, you know, getting busy on that particular <laughs> <laughs> nine months before yeah. May fifteenth. What point. was happening? That's yeah. a really what, good point. If there was a holiday, some big event that took place, you know, what was going on nine nine months previous to that? I never thought and of that. Let's uh, and you know, speaking of Midnight Says Espanol, one of our co-hosts, and uh, he's starting to bring out content on the site from South America. Diego Flores, uh, Polly is our Andre, and I'm like Tom. Very much. <laughs> nice. Very much. I, I love mean, it. I still do a lot of the editing, but he does a lot of the editing too for that side of things. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's a very big joint effort, and you guys do a great job. I mean, even if you're not somebody who speaks Spanish. Uh, the channel is set up to where I've, I've actually had some people reach out to me and say, it's a great way of learning how to converse in Spanish because you can sit there and learn Spanish words all day long. But I've mm -hmm. actually had at least uh, three or four people now, I think it is, reach out to me and say similar stuff. Like, I love it because you guys, and I mean, I give you crap when I go in there and I'm like, I can understand what you're saying in big caps, <laughs> just giving them crap. It's like, yeah. But no, I think it's a really cool idea. And uh, when I, Andre brought it up to me, uh, I was just happy I thought of you because so far I think it's been great. And I think everybody should check it out. Not just uh, not just the Spanish speaking communities. Well, right. we're off to a great start um, for all those people that uh, sent us those sent us those super chats. Muchísimas gracias. This is for you. Now that's real footage, RMB from Cuba. My friend was there. Wow, okay. That's him, that's him filming this lady. And I'm like, I'm 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 stealing that. I I I that's one place I really want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Cuba. Wepa, wepa. Um, oh, we have a new member, Tom Jr. Jackson. And you know what? He's a good man. I think it's I think it's time for dancing dogs. What what do you guys say? Is it time for dancing dogs? It's uh, it can uh, your life can only be made better with dancing dogs. <laughs> wow, that was that was pretty amazing. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. 
<laughs> you, you've you've seen all our tricks, RMB. You've seen them all now. I love them all. I, well, that's the best thing to have. You just keep. You have to add more to your arsenal all the time. Um, you know, one of the perks of being a member on the channel is uh, uh hanging out with filmmakers and uh, musicians uh, in our private Zoom uh, um, um, uh, streams. But also, too, you get to come on when we have awesome guests uh, such as R&B and that 70s rock fan who's a proud member of the channel. Good How evening, you, gentlemen. Hi. You had a question, sir. Hey, thanks for having me on, Polly. Hi, Tom, as well. And good evening, Robert. It's a pleasure and an honor to meet you, sir. Oh, well, it's, I, I mean, we, I, you're, I love your voice already. <laughs> yes, I could do my Sean if you wish. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Polly's heard it a million times. He's not impressed. <laughs> it's uh, pretty good, though. <laughs> so I watched your stream a couple of days ago where you were talking about action movies and, and Fast and Furious in general. And uh, I had to agree with you entirely, of course, about the, the ridiculousness of the action in that particular series now. So... Where do you see action movies going in the next five to ten years? Do you think they're going to continue to get bigger and with more CGI, or will there be a return to practical effects? Well, you know, what's really interesting, I was talking with Mike Bodden, who's basically my business partner, and he and I were, he, he brought up something really interesting that I, I actually hadn't considered, but I think he was right, which is I think video games, cut scenes in video games are starting to seep in and affect everyone from VS, VFX artists to directors. Because, I, you know, I remember there was a, a really great PlayStation 3 game, what started earlier, called Burnout. And in mm, Burnout, yeah. you know, one of the things you did was you caused car crashes, and then you could, <laughs> you could make your car crash. And do, if you could get to, like, the more cars you would hit and destroy, the better off you'd be. And it was totally mm. ridiculous, and it had very little to do with any kind of real-world physics. But yeah. I think that... You know, we're, we're starting to watch, I mean, video game cutscenes, and whether you're looking at car racing games or action, whatever action sequences are having are happening in video games, they're so over the top that I think people mm. are starting to want to recreate video game action scenes in, in movies. And I think yeah. that's that idea, that sensibility is sort of crept into it. And I think what's happening too is when you're, when you're doing like real car chases where people are, you have real drivers, there's also an element of safety. Uh, you have to worry about your, your personnel, you know, your drivers, your pedestrians, uh, the, the crew itself. Yeah. And I think the more, more and more using CG techniques and, and, and replacing reality with CG, it makes it easier to recreate these outlandish scenes. And as people crave more and more, I don't know, stimula stimulation, I think we're losing something. But that's only because uh, we haven't been seeing the alternative, which is actual real action. And then you go and you look at like the Mission Impossible franchise when Tom Cruise will, like really hang off the side of a plane, you know, mm. or he'll really he'll <laughs> really do these crazy things. And I think people look at the Mission Impossible franchise like Fallout has some the, la the last two movies, Rogue Nation and Fallout, yeah, have some yeah. incredible action. And they really strive, and, and Christopher Nolan, um, while I don't think a lot of his action, especially the hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff he does, is necessarily as, is as effective as it could be, I do yeah. think that people crave reality in, in movies because mm. one of the things about Fast 9 is all of the action scenes are so untethered from any reality, which means they're untethered from any consequences. And if you don't yeah. fear for the safety of the people in the scenes, and I mean like the characters, the people that are actually going through the story, if you know that they're never going to get hurt, if you know that they can be in a truck that rolls down the side of a mountain and then they're just like, meh, I'm okay. And you're like, come on. Yeah, I mean, I had to agree with you. It's just the untethering from physics is, it, it really, much as I love a big action spectacle, it's becoming unwatchable almost. I mean, it, it, I understand the dangers of a, of a real physical car chase with real drivers. But at the same time, you can just tell with the right cin cinematography that looks much better. The right direction 
the right All right. Thank you. It can be as exciting, you know. Thank you, that 70s rock fan. We love you, brother. Thank you for being a great Thanks, member. Thank you, Robert. Cheers. Can I I want to add, can I add something really quick to what he said? Absolutely. So if you look at a movie like The Empire Strikes Back, for instance, and when the Millennium Falcon goes into the asteroid field, it's breathtaking because you know the stakes. If one of those rocks mm -hmm. hits the ship, it's gonna be wasted, you know, and 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 it, it's breathtaking. Now you fast yeah. forward ahead to The Force Awakens when Ray her first time behind the, the controls of the Millennium Falcon, she's flying through a destroyed Star Destroyer expertly. I mean, making maneuvers she can't possibly yeah. pull off. Yeah. It, it, it's not exciting anymore. Yeah. It's not like it's what right. it was when you first saw it in Empire. Yeah. And even that was all model work, you know. Leaves and, you it, cold. It, yeah. Leaves you cold. Yeah. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate sure. that. Absolutely. Thanks, brother. Cheers, man. And you, you know, the thing, too, with... Uh, uh, that because I saw that nine times in the theater. I went to the Westwood Village Avco Cinemas when I was uh, nine years old. I would take the bus by myself. My dad would give me money. He worked in Westwood Village and uh, I went to the Avco. Saw it nine times. That's before they split it in half, too. That was way before, man. When it had the giant I love When I first moved here, yeah. it was still once. Oh, man, that theater was awesome, too. So I remember with 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 that asteroid scene what made it so scary was that some were moving so slow yep and then some were moving fast yep some were so unstable and then you're like oh okay yeah and then and you're and right then, han, han you know han han was just trying to you know he was trying to keep his cool but he was losing his shit yeah, and you've got three C three PO's going. Oh, sir, the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field are three thousand seven hundred and twenty to one and Han's like, never tell me the odds, you know, and, and it, it, it's all action with character. You don't know, depress me, Robert. Don't depress me because I'm now I think about how he was killed off. I don't like that. That's terrible. And then you got C-3P at one point going, wow, he like throws his hands up. Like yeah. if a droid scared. <laughs> right, a droid scared. You know, you know stuff is so much is, character, man. Yeah. And by then you're you're by. I mean, it's the second movie in. Uh, it's a Godfather 2 of. It is, man. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, right. Um, moving right along. Um, if you guys want to be member, uh, yeah, well, you know, you know the spiel. Here's one of our great members to the Slantino Nation, Matt, Bud Boy Productions. What's happening, How brother? I'm all right, right. All right. How are you doing? Good, good. You have a question for Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett? I do. Yes. How's it going, Rob? You're right. It's good to see you. Where, where are you coming to, Ada? Where are you coming to? Us I'm from? in England at the moment. Nice. So, yeah, it's a, bit of a, a late night for me, but uh, yeah, it's always worth it for the Latino slant, though. So yeah. <laughs> nice, brother. But, um, yes, yes. Yeah, my thing actually kind of continues on from the last thing you were just talking about in that last question with regards to like practical things. You're a fan of Jerry Anderson, aren't you? Oh, I am a huge Jerry Anderson fan. That's it. I Huge, because I, I thought I heard you say um, that you once pitched an idea for a UFO sequel series. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I, I, we wrote Bill Hunt, who publishes the Digital Bits, and I. Some friends of mine are, were involved. Uh, another producer and and uh, director friend of mine. They had an in at ITV, who owns those shows now. And uh, you know, UFO is one of my favorite things in the world and for those of you who don't know ufo was a tv series that was made between 1969 and 1971 and it was jerry anderson's first live action show they'd made a movie called doppelganger aka journey to the far side of the sun and then they made ufo and then they made space 1999 and ufo ran 26 seasons or 26 episodes 26 seasons i wish it ran 26 episodes and i've always loved the show and so we came up with an idea for a new UFO show that would be in continuity with the old series. So the UFO happened. The UFO series happened in 1980 when it was set, even though it was made in 69 to 71, but it was set in 1980. And then there were flashbacks throughout the 70s during the show, but we, we wanted to set it in the mid-2020s. And it was interesting because there was some pushback to that. Like there was, there was people that said... Um, yeah, but why you guys are relying too heavily on the previously existing mythology. And we said, look, nobody's going to know. Like, you don't have to see, 
if you haven't seen the original UFO, it wouldn't matter the same way. Well, up until the new series, but like with Game of Thrones, they talked about all of these events in the past that you never saw, whether it was Robert's Rebellion or the Mad King, and they kept referring to things that were happening in the past, but you understood what was happening based on those references. And we did have some direct correlations characters that we were going to bring back, like Wanda Ventum, who is Benedict Cumberbatch's mother in real life. She played Colonel Virginia Lake in the series originally, and she's like in her 90s now. We like, we want to bring her back. You know, we want her, assuming she'd be in good health enough to where she could, we could shoot a few scenes with her because uh, we, I thought we'd, that would be great. And then another character we were going to bring back was this this android spaceship called Sid, the space intruder detector, and and uh, we were bringing that character back as well. And they just, it was interesting. I mean, I still think we could make it work because it, you know, it's it legitimately could be a very diverse show because by definition, it it has people from the main characters are all from all over the world. So you could, you, it would really be modern and, and it, the diversity issue, it would, you, you would want it to be because the more people that are represented, that's, that was what shadow is all about in the first place. So I still want to do it. Like I would love to be able to do it because I think it would make a great, a great show. I love it. I love Jerry Anderson stuff. Just as when you're a kid, how can you not with I all of the mean, vehicles and the characters and the, all the explosions and everything like especially thunderbirds and so i mean i loved it as well <laughs> yeah i mean and and the funny thing is also when we were kids like i hadn't in america i was growing up in seattle the only thing i knew about the thunderbirds was i had the die cast metal dinky toy but i'd never seen the thunderbirds i didn't even know that it was the wrong color mine was blue you know it wasn't green like the thunderbird 2 is supposed to be and and i i didn't know what it was because we didn't we didn't have super marionation shows. And, you know, I remember seeing pictures in books of, of, of the Thunderbirds. I'm like, how, how, how can I see this? You know, there was no VCRs yet. And I just, I couldn't. And it wasn't until like in the early eighties that I finally got to see Thunderbirds and Scarlet, uh, Captain Scarlet and Joe 90 and Sing Ray and Fireball XL five and Supercar, like the entire pantheon of fifties and sixties jerry anderson i i saw ufo in space 1999 before i saw any of the super mary nation series nice. all says, right there was one jerry anderson series which is kind of like similar with, with regards to its show run like um with ufo and you had like 24 episodes and that was space precinct did you ever see that? i loved Ooh. space precinct that was another live action show that was airing what the late 80s I think was uh, it, uh, mid nineties. Was it mid nineties? Mid nineties. But I, it comes from an, a, a concept from something he had earlier on. Space Police, I think he called it's, it. And it's live action. It's awesome. I loved Space wow. Precinct. Matt, thank you so much, boy. Bud Boy no, Productions, boy, named after his man. dog, Bud. Uh, hope you're. you're yeah, hope he's, he's, he's doing well. There he is. <laughs> he's um, Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for being such a great member of uh, the Slantino Nation. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, it was good, good to meet you, you sir. Take oh, and thanks for staying up, man. Thanks for staying uh -huh. up. Always a pleasure, man. How cool is that, man? Now I want to watch Space Precinct. I, I, you know, I have a list here of these shows that I don't think exist, but because you recommended them, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, wow, well, it's 95 <laughs> to 96. I, you know, it's funny. Um, yeah. But it's it's Space Precinct is really really cool. Um, real fast, new member. I guess they renewed or something. I don't know what, but thanks, Brandon. And we have a super chat, a regalito for five dollars. Dash Dees. Hey Rob, I'm supposed to be following you everywhere. You everywhere I go, you're there. Kind of creepy, sir. I'm following you. Sharing the plants was nice, but hi Tom, hi Polly. <laughs> um. I mean, you got to love that uh, about your community. It's global. The Burnett work is global. The post geek singularity. But so is your Slantino Nation. You just proved you got people from the UK here. Well, just like they say in uh, in uh, in Blood In, Blood Out, somos pocos, pero locos, homie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you, that's one other thing that I think that the COVID, I mean, I try and look for the, the silver lining and everything. Mm -hmm. But but the fact that, you know, on the Internet, 
everybody's been these keyboard warriors that have been hiding behind names and things, mm. but COVID has brought us all together face to face. Right. You know, that we're, we're watching each other as, as Tom's hiding behind his picture, but he's been I know, here, man. What's he's been here. So that? we know, see, there you go. There's that handsome face, but, but I, I, I love supper. Oh, nice. I, just, <laughs> nice. I love the fact that we are, um, we can see each other, you know, like just now you had a gentleman come on from England and, when would that have happened? You mm -hmm. know, people just weren't doing that. And, and that's, I think something that's come out of, of COVID is, is especially on our YouTube channels. It's the planet earth. Anybody can come on from anywhere. Like I've got people coming on from Norway and people coming on from Finland and people coming on from all over the world. And it's, I think yeah. it's a great thing. It's really cool. Mexican Iron Man, what's going on, brother? With what? What's going on? I don't know. Did you bring With me what? in? Or... Are you in a truck stop bathroom, Mexican Iron Man? Oh my God, this has been happening since early this morning. Okay. <laughs> that's what you get for, that that's means what you get for is. coming on. I know where he probably being, really is. But, being yeah. mean to me. How am I being mean to you? Well, didn't you have an announcement to make about our, about our members? Okay, I guess he forgot the um, cue. Oh, oh, um, oh <laughs> Brent, Brandon the Infinite Wolf upgraded. Worth it. Wow. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. We will be having a uh, membership stream this Sunday. We're going to be guess... gifting boxing for the members. It's not an unboxing. I'm going to be boxing up stuff for you guys. Oh, um, I thought you were like, going to be fighting somebody. No, uh -huh. <laughs> no. I did want to say this, Polly, and I want to yeah. tell the members this is that is that I'm a member of a lot of places, and uh, it, what I love about, um, I mean, and, and you know, Rob's amazing with his membership level. So you know, when it's not a member, there become one. But Polly's kind of emulated the same type of thing. There's tons of perks. There's tons of. And then we have watch parties where we're actually in a Zoom session, so you don't have to like you know sync up. You can actually like go into a, a virtual theater. That Polly has set up the watch parties are awesome. It's like going to a virtual theater. I mean, I know COVID's stopping, but we're all friends now, and it's neat to go to meetings with each other and, and then see each other's faces too. And that Zoom call is kind of neat. And then some of the stuff, there's some clips and some interviews and some more music that because of YouTube restrictions, he can't put out on the main channel like live right. or you know, stuff. So there's tons of good stuff. So I encourage everybody, you know, and the, and the prices that Polly's picked, I think, are really affordable. So, you know, I'm not. Look, I know I'm 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 a rich and I'm a volunteer here, but as a member, Polly, I'm telling you, you've done a great job, and I'm really having a blast being a, being a Slantino man. And by the way, the Slantino name is uber cool. It's like it's like what we have over at the Post Geek Singularity. It's so cool. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm like. I want a Slantino here. shirt, you know. I, I, mean, I, I, I can't love... believe we haven't thought of that yet. So we'll get on that. You don't have to be. It should say like in small words. You don't have to be Latino to be it, and then Slantino make it on there. <laughs> You know, I think that's I think that's really cool. Well, you, you got know, your hoodie on. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, but, I, I I it's I, I love merch. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and if you look at like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, he's always wearing Geeks always. and Gamers merch. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I you know, it's like who ever thought that was another thing. Like I never the idea that we have merch for our channels and people will buy it and it's cool. Like I I I love that. I mean, again, it's just all part of making a community and you know i read this article on my show today that was about how do you manage basically ip and this guy really savvy investor wrote this article and he said one of the things that is essential there's three things that are essential but one of them is you have to generate the love for the ip he literally said that in within the audience hmm. and and the love is what keeps the audience growing and keeps them coming back year after year and our biggest conglomerates Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, even Game of Thrones in the end, the love was not there. And 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 you have to cultivate in the fan base. A lot of these places don't. They like they forego the fans. They think, oh, the fans don't. No, it's the fans. It's that core love that has fans talking and memeing and making things and, and yeah. pushing it on social media. That's how people share their love of stuff. And if you lose that love, you're damaging your brand. And I think one of the things yeah. about about these channels, our channels, I mean, having catchphrases and things, it's fun to say. Like Slantino is just a fun word to say. Like, yeah, man, I'm a, I'm part of the Slantino Nation. Are you going to join? You know, and that that's yeah. what gives you community. Well, and you know, and because because it's a you know Latino arts uh, driven specific site, 
you know, we're excited when we hear, you know, uh, like there's this new Latina that got cast as Wednesday Adams for the team. Right. Um, and I'm like, does he look strange? Yes. Does she look cool? Yes. All right, great. And it's an added for me that she is Latina, but of course we all wanted to kick ass first. Yeah. Yes. Um, we report it, you know, cause we are excited about it. Uh, you know, especially stuff that's groundbreaking. Yep. Um, but not just for the sake of, of race swapping, you know, um, which is such a controversial hot topic, you know, lately. Um, it almost seems every day there's some, some redonkulous, you know, project that, that is announced. Um, we hear we we I like sifting through through it, and it's okay to be happy about some of these <laughs> accomplishments, like right. Sasha Kaye being Supergirl, and you know, uh, you, you know the the hot Cheetos guy getting his own movie in his own book, <laughs> you know the hot Cheeto the guy who created the hot Cheetos is they're making a movie out he was a janitor, yeah you know so anyways you know um but. I'm not, you know, uh, I, I try, I try to keep it, keep it from the tear down. You know what I mean? Um, on the channel. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's, you know, the negativity is, is one thing, but it, it's funny to me because all of the things we love also came from the film, the film studios and things like that. So it, it, it for me, it's, it's always, it's kind of a push and a pull. Like I, I'm always like, no, people shouldn't be negative, and then I'll talk about how much I can't stand Star Trek Discovery, <laughs> you know, and I, I just go well, on and on and on, and, right. and I, I mean, I've beat a dead horse. There is no more horse left, and I'm still beating no. it. I, yeah, I hear it all the time from Clobber and Times. Um, I have a question for for you and Tom, and this is a great question. It comes from, uh, in fact, our buddy Mexican Iron Man. If aliens were about to attack and obliterate all media. What do you grab as your only media to have with you for the rest of your life? Ooh. And here are your options. Star Trek, the original series. Star Trek, next generation. Star Wars, episodes four through six. Up to three of your favorite hot toys. Can only pick one. You know... I would well, first of all, I would have I, I wouldn't take the Star Wars movies because that's only six hours of entertainment. <laughs> you know, I, I I would have to take the he said next generation. Do you say next gen? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I would take that because there's 170 uh 178 episodes of next generation. There's only 79 Same. episodes of the original series. So I would take those 179 178 episodes because you'd get the most in If that's all that's left <laughs> of all media, it's all in your hands. It, it it there's you know Star Trek the Next Generation and Star Trek are essentially anthology shows with recurring cast members, so each story is different. You you it represents the whole gamut of of dramatic storytelling. There's romances, there's whimsical fantasies, there's real big drama, there's action. So at least like for for if that's it, I'd be passing down those Blu-rays for generations to come. At least we could show all the different examples of storytelling to our the to the the little the next generation would teach the next generation about storytelling. Yeah, pretty good, Tom. No, I got to go with Robert on this one, and I don't own any hot toys, so that's because um, you're your own hot toy. Come on now, hey now. <laughs> no, I just uh, I do enjoy my NECA like 14 inch Ninja Turtle. Yeah, I was gonna say Turtle. yeah, your Ninja Turtle. Um, you've got a I Castle mean, Grayskull behind you too. I do. That's the and new one. Oh, yeah, that's pretty dope, dude. Come on now. Yeah. yeah, considering a lot of people were saying their orders got canceled, I was surprised I got it. Um, but yeah, as far as my toys go, God, I have too many to pick. So uh, <laughs> no, like, I'm going to let Robert go on this one because he's actually got hot toys. So I'd be like, I'll take his. Oh, I thought, <laughs> hot, I thought hot toys was was the um, what that was part of the choices that you could take. Or was yeah. that in addition? I have to tell well, you, like. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. You, your options pick one of the following. So yeah, that was one of the following. Yeah, I, I, see, the thing about yeah. hot toys is, is they 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 would be kind of useless in the future because you couldn't learn anything from them. Right. If you couldn't show, if you couldn't show the the remaining survivors, like if I took one of the great Iron Man hot toys, and like I met a child from a ravaged community that was destroyed by aliens, that, that and that kid grew up, what would they do with 
an Iron Man hot toy if they'd never seen any of the Avengers movies. <laughs> you know, it'd be kind of lost on them. But on the other hand, I could show, assuming I had power and TV to show it on, Very I could show point. the next generation. <laughs> I would hope so. No, I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Okay, I got a quick I got a quick commentary. It's more of a compliment and more of a flattering compliment for you, R&B, which is that I want to tell you that um, some people talk about the last, you know, well, everybody's bitching about Star Trek Discovery because it sucks, right? But the actual, the actual last, um, I think, really good Star Trek that was done that I enjoyed very much was something that you edited, which was Axanar. And even though the whole project went to hell in the handbasket because of yeah. the guys that were in charge of it, and I just want to say basically I compliment you because I was, I was one of the ones donating 100 bucks a month on Axanar and that con paid way before things went to hell in the handbasket. And the way you handled yourself, sir, total gentleman, total class act. Thank you for what you did with your editing. Thank you for that. And even for being such a class act that even now months and well, I don't know what, year later, you know, the snippets that you showed us in the post geek singularity uh, recently, I think it was a few months ago, I really appreciate you. And so I just want to tell you that <clears throat> with all the static that's out there about that whole project, you gave us a really neat old gift and you don't get a lot of credit for it. And I know it was you. And I really thank you oh. for what you gave us with that. Yeah, I, I've thank got one. you so, so much. No, I really appreciate that. And, you know, on my channel, I put, I wanted to, one of the things that was unfortunate about that whole project is that when it started, so for those of you who don't know, I was involved in a Star Trek fan film project. It started out great and it was really innovative and it was really interesting. And you can see it on YouTube. It's called Prelude to Axanar. Mm. And, and it was conceived of as a documentary about the, the four years war between the federation and the klingons that took place about 20 years before the original series and it all it has professional actors in it tony todd is in it gary graham who played soval and enterprise comes back and it was a really fun project it was crowdfunded it was great and it was the proof of concept before we were going to make a feature and then what happened was the the gentleman who who it was his idea but he was in charge of the project like everyone else who worked on axonar had other jobs you know, and other things to do. We all we all had our day jobs and we're working on other things. Like I was working mm -hmm. on the Next Generation documentaries when I was working on Axanar and I would work on that at nights or, or on the weekends and stuff. And I thought it was a great project. And Axanar, they crowdfunded it. They asked for $10,000. They made 100000 We then went and shot Axanar and then I was given the movie to edit and I supervised all the post-production and everything. And, and we I started cutting it in May and then we debuted it at the San Diego Comic Con in, in 2014 in July. So it was really about four and a half months soup to nuts from the time it was crowdfunded to the time it had its world premiere in a movie theater at the San Diego Comic Con. And it was great. I thought, wow, this is terrific. And then what happened was, like so often these things do, mm -hmm. is the man who controlled the project, uh, Alec Peters, you know, he started when we started raking in a lot of money, the money was for the project, you know, and 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 we should have just put it in a, an account and had a, a production accountant oversee it. But Alec took that money and it was all in his accounts and he oversaw it. And that's yep. I, I that was when things, I think, started to go awry. And then, of course, when you work in film here, here's I'll tell you all a secret about working in movies and and. Uh, a, a lot of th this is a truism I've seen happen again and again and again. Obviously, working in Hollywood can be very glamorous, and everybody thinks about the perks. You wind up going to meeting starlets and going to fabulous parties, and and a lot of people get into the business because they want that. Well, here's the thing. Here's the real secret. When you make a movie, even if it gets wildly successful, mm -hmm. you as a person don't change you're the same person you were before you started making the movie and everybody thinks that when they've made a film like i don't know rainbows are going to shoot out of your ass or the <laughs> godlike heaven heavens are going to shine upon you and you're going to feel differently and and you don't you know you don't and and for me i love making movies like stick me in an edit bay for six months at a time working yeah. on a low budget indie movie and I'm happy as a clam because nice. I love the process. But there's a lot of people that think, especially they they see they see other people who work in the business and people singing their praises and they want that adulation. And the thing is 
the people that really love making movies and are are good at it or have reasonable like I know for a fact that when I work on something, it might not be the best thing in the world, but I can make it better. I know I can make it at least good to great. Hopefully, I'll make something that's excellent. But you know, I know I can work, so I don't need I don't need people to tell me it's great, although that that's always nice to hear because I know it's at least going to be good and competent. There's nothing wrong with positive affirmation. No, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a lot of people that believe that that's what that's that's what they want. They thrive on that adulation. And to me, it's like, no, no, no. It's the process. It's the making of it that's so much fun. It's like solving these creative problems and how are we going to make this work? And, you know, they gave me a lot of leeway when we were doing the Axonar short prelude to Axonar. Like there wasn't a narrator. And I, 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 when I was cutting it, I'm like, you know, I think we really need a narrator. And my, my creative contributions were always welcome. And from a creative standpoint, even though it's only a 20 minute short, I had a lot of fun working with Alec and working with Christian Gossett, the director, who's been a friend of mine for a long time. It was just a joyous experience to work on it all, but it was a collective effort. You know, when you're making a movie, it's, it's all of these talented people come together and they all do their part. And everybody's part is significant. Nobody really plays an insignificant part when you're making a movie. The glamorous, you know, actors, directors, cinematographers, well, they get, sure, the glamour, but everybody on a film set, the hair and makeup people, the costume people, the grip and electric department, everybody that works in the camera department, all of these people are working together with synergistic uh, uh, fervor. They all are intertwined and they're working together to create this thing. And that's what excites me about movie making. I and to add to that really quick, uh, no, sorry to interrupt you. No, right? no, I'm done. Um, it's fine. You know, R Romy is like, you know, she's, you know, trained actress, yeah. you know, and works and, you know, is very blessed with work. But man, you know what she loves? She loves her makeup crew, her costume people. She gives them so much respect. And you know what? They always remember her. Like oh, yeah. she gets another gig with they're like Romy from the security guard to the director to the executive producer. They love her because you know she respects them all, man. You know, and uh that's a big deal. It is, that's and you know deal. what? It goes a long way. When yeah. when you're on when you're on a uh like I've always told people if you get the chance to direct, if you're a producer or you get a chance to direct, the director gets half a day to win his crew or her crew over. You get half a day. And how do you win your crew over? By knowing what you're doing. Because your crew is there to serve your vision as the director. And if you don't have a vision, your crew is, you're letting them down. Your job is to have a vision of what your movie is going to be. And if you don't have that vision, your entire crew, you might have 100 people waiting on you. You've let them down. And what a good producer does, especially when it comes, I've always, people laugh at me. I'm like, what are the two most important positions? What are the first two positions you should hire on your movie? Even before, a well, usually you have the director, but the first two key crew positions, well, three actually, hair and makeup and the caterer. Those are the, those are the most, because your hair and makeup people are the people your actors spend the most time with. And they need to know when they walk out on set, they look good. And their clothes, are they, they feel like a million bucks. So they don't have to worry about that anymore because actors are worried about how they look. If you can alleviate that, take away that worry from them, then they walk out, they focus on their work. That's why hair and makeup people and the costumers, and they're like yeah. psychologists, are the most important people as far as yeah. actors go. And then catering. you you yeah. At lunchtime, <laughs> Robert, you got to make oh sure, joke. man, you got to make sure that your crew feels that you've got good catering and good craft service because that's the way the producers tell the crew that they're taken care of. You know, it's good, funny because I was going to make a joke and kind of set you up for that. I was going to, and sandwiches help, but like, <laughs> you got into it already, but no, it's true. You're right. Like those are very important things. And uh, yeah, I mean, on any production, I mean, even if you're just some little uh, independent oh, thing, you especially know, you if you're a little people. independent. Yep. And if you that you would be surprised at just how far that goes. Because oh, yeah. independent crews who are working on indie films, they know it's going to be a pain in the ass. They know it's going to be hard work and because it's it's you never have enough time or enough money. But the one thing you can do is make sure that your crew has at least two choices for lunch that's good, whether it's a meat and a fish, or and then always have a third vegan choice for people. And you do that 
your crew will work harder. Because if you have to vote, well, that's at the really end of insightful. That that's really amazing. Let's, so that stuff I've heard you talk about that before. So that stuff really matters that much, huh? Dude, yeah. it matters so much because yeah. what it, you're yeah. making a statement to your crew. You're well, telling now I feel crew like crew bringing Romy matter. in and asking her that. You know, that would be really cool. Go get her, bro. Go get her. Well, she she's she she just got back in. Uh, oh, okay. but let's uh let's take a little break uh let's look at these uh super chats and we'll we'll, t we'll do a little boogie break uh valiant renegade for five dollars yeah. muchisimas gracias he is a member of this channel look at this beautiful motley crew what up gang what up valiant well uh polly's the one they call dr feel good <laughs> nice <laughs> what <laughs> he all right what? Yo, <laughs> i have to go way down here all right and uh a regalito of 10 uh, uh bolas uh brandon wolf conglomerates do not care want appreciate or give a damn about us that is why i give so much to great people here on the tubes who i follow appreciate us the fans that become friends be great you know that, that is a that is a good point a i mean big I, deal right there i think That's we're missing the guys like walt disney and these other guys who kind of the buck stops with me. Yeah. And like, you know, like they, they kind of like, they are the face of the company. Cause it's so easy to just hide behind the logo. Now, you know, just bring in another one. And then the old one gets to walk. Well, look at the whole Kalar thing. Sure. He got the ax and he got, you know, kind of booted without any real announcement or uh, uh, yeah. warning, but he's also walking away with like a $55 million. <laughs> severance package too you, you know what else um, though I, I i mean i don't know him but i kind of feel bad because he was really into warner yeah. brothers Ooh. he was really into it man and I, I i mean he was a young guy i mean the way he I, I read an article about how he walked around the lot just to meet people and he was learning about the whole history uh, of the studio and uh, it, really? it's like uh but then again like you said tom he walked away with i mean if i walked away somewhere with 54 million bucks i'd go right. produce like six movies get myself a fat netflix deal based on the first two i produced and then keep going like that would you could turn into uh, you'd be jason blum with that of course no one's going to do that with their 54 million dollars they're going to go you know take care of themselves but i'd use it and blow it on movies <laughs> go make movies that money <laughs> and our hermano from mornings of mischief loki ten dollars uh muchismas gracias loki skull what a panel congrats polly well, I have to say congrats to you, Loki, and thank you so much because I did a little research and watched uh, an old interview from last December with Robert Meyer Burnett and Loki. So that was cool. Yeah. That was fantastic. So um, to all those who uh, gifted us those regalitos, muchísimas gracias. And this one is for you. Over 50 people in the chat. A whole I bunch haven't of seen likes. everything you got. I hadn't seen that yet. <laughs> That's, That's racist, I say. That's pumpkin. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's racist. I'm That's racist. On you. Um, Since Rob was yeah. complaining, I put my picture up. Hey, this is what I look like. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Thank that you, Roger very good H. Fact, Emily. Really quick, this just came in. It's a thumbs up. Thank you, Roger, so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you for all the... Uh, Wow, awesome uh, members, Slantinos, uh, people of the Burnett work, and uh, Tom of Midnight's Edge, Robert Meyer Burnett, the great Mexican Iron Man. We, uh, it, any uh, Slantino members that still want to come on, we do have time maybe for one or two more questions. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, what happened? What Over happened? at Warner? Robert, what's that? Over at Warner, you mean? Or? No, no, no. I'm going to, I'm like. Oh, I'm sorry. No, with our okay. entire world <laughs> Ay, Dios. um where, where what happened to the entertainment uh industry entertaining us and now they're trying to educate us what is going on i, I and the, the funny thing is i don't know that a lot of people have educational degrees you know they don't have masters in education and yet everyone I, look I, I you know what i think is very funny hmm. that the 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 idea the road to hell is paved with good intentions and i honestly believe 
that our culture, I think that inclusion and uh, diversity is actually a really good thing. And I think that it's, mm -hmm. it's, we're destined to be a more enlightened and better culture when people have a voice and people get to talk and all that. But I thought that that was something that was naturally occurring. It was just well, it happening. Was. It, was, it, was. it was, it was happening <laughs> on its own. Like if you yeah. think about the fact that, that I've got uh, a friend of mine, well, one of my oldest friends in the world, he, he's gay and he's been with his husband now for years. And he once told me that he was like, you know, I can't believe how quickly gay marriage was accepted into culture and how it became a, a law of the land. He thought he would never live to see that right. happen. And he watched it happen over the course of his lifetime very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that that, that, because people are inherently, I think, I do believe that people, most people are born with empathy and most people care about other people. I really believe that maybe that's naive because this certainly the history of the 20th century doesn't bear that out. I will but say I, that. And I will add that most people, the majority of people are not racist. No, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think they are. <laughs> they might either. be ignorant, but there's yeah. a huge difference. Well, what's funny and is, I, I... and I've, I've lived through some of that shit, right? Like, yeah, you know, at a certain, at a, at a certain grade, they, they would punish you if you spoke any Spanish in class, uh, or the whatever. It, you know, and you've said this before, RMB. It is our unique perspective on the world. That is my experience that I can bring to you and talk and talk to you have yours tom has his iron man has his everyone in the chat has their beautiful experiences man and you are so passionate about you give you're very giving uh to your community man man uh that is that is something to be respected um so i appreciate that I, yeah thanks. so you know and then they've done this job to where there's where we're, they've separated us from each other man i I cannot believe how segregated and how tribal, you know, people have become because like I grew up, I had lots of very, uh, let's call them alternative friends from a very early age. And I, I liked them and, and they were, everybody was all nice to me. We were all bonded by our collective love of in Seattle. It was, it was the music scene and the cinema scene in Seattle it was very vibrant. And I, you know, started going to the events when I was way young and I started meeting people, all kinds of crazy people in their twenties and thirties and forties. And it was, it was really nurturing. And now what I find so strange is so often, at least it, it seems to me that people that are going after others that or, or feel that they're crusaders or something, they're getting off on it. Like they'll tell you that, no, 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 we're fighting for the rights of other people. And I'm like, no, you're making this about yourself. You're telling, you're telling people by, by demanding things, you're putting yourself in a position where you're making yourself, you're giving yourself, you're giving yourself the moral high ground where you think that you're more enlightened or more superior or more knowledgeable than other people. And you're making it your job to go in and police other people's lives and it makes you feel better and that's what i'm seeing i'm not seeing people i'm seeing people that believe that it's their job to go tell others well you're that you're a bad person you're this you're that and i'm like where did that come from where did that idea who made you the thought police or the moral majority that's what you're doing is that's fascism you know it's 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 the exact opposite of what america and what the entire West has been founded on, which is the 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 individual, the people's individuality, is what our our entire civilization is based upon. And now we have these tribal groups that want to tell you, well, you're not right. You're not right in the head. You're thinking the wrong way, and we're going to make sure you think the way we want you to think. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I saw that in 1930s Germany. And uh, why are you why are you this way? And it's really strange to me. Because what what yeah. is it? You're, you're, it? It's almost like people that are really young. Like I see this a lot with college kids. I mean, I guess because mm -hmm. they're young, you know, they want the world to be changed into whatever they want it to be changed into right now, without any understanding. Because they weren't, they didn't live, they weren't, they didn't, they weren't alive twenty years ago or twenty five years ago or whatever, and they 
they don't see the evolution that's even occurred during the last 30 years of of the world you know i mean you, you yeah it, yeah it's i strange. mean it's, you know we you know it's it's so it's so strange because you know um just by by me uh calling well you know what I, I don't want to go down there with with with, uh, with with labels and all that stuff. We do have a another guest. Um, he is a member of the channel, but more importantly, he's a, a good friend of ours, and we are good friends of his. The great Stone Loki. All right. How are you guys doing tonight? God, look at this panel. Look at this panel. Hell yes. Hell yes. I, I wanted to say something real quick. When Rob was on my show he talked about those japanese figures he's got behind him and how he saw them right now yeah. man he wanted them but they were so expensive yeah the seven that, samurai yes the seven samurai action figures you got and, one there there yeah there's there's yeah. leisure jimbo but then here's the other seven though you can't they're off camera but yeah <laughs> they all came in this one box and they were made okay. by a company called alfrex and they were fifteen hundred dollars and this was 20 years ago and I'm like, I can't, who could ever justify that? So then one day I found him on consignment at Meltdown for half price. And I, I, I ran to the bank and got the cash and bought them. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago, they're still right here and they're in great shape. Well, when we were talking toys and when I was growing up, all I, I got GI Joe's, everything GI Joe possible that, that, and if I ever asked for anything else, if I ever asked for Transformers, I ain't buying you no plastic junk from Japan. That's that's <laughs> what I got, right? So there there was this there was this combiner that came out called the Aerial Bots, and they combined to form this big robot uh, Superion, right? Well, the other day I'd been looking for it. And it's like six hundred fifty, seven hundred dollars different places. The other day I come across it, and it's it's not that. It's it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I've got to have this thing. I've wow, got to buy this thing. Really? I'm looking at it now. That's really cool. And it's two feet tall when you wow. combine it. Wow. See-through. It's see-through colored plastic. They look beautiful. It's the Zeta Toys version Ooh. of Superion. It's called Superitron because it's a third party. But just the fact that I was able to actually do so, it made, it made me remember what Rob was talking about that day, getting those seven samurai figures from the pawn shop. <laughs> he was like, no, I want them. I'll be back. I'll have the money. I'm coming back. I'm going to the bank right now. Don't sell them. I'll be back. It, just, it made me feel like that. And I just wanted to share that with him and say, Paulie, you're doing kick-ass, brother, oh. Mixed Iron Man. You're doing great, Tom. How you doing, guys? You guys are doing great. Excellent panel. Thank you, Rob, yep. for i love that you did that stone cold Loki. <laughs> i mean you know what's funny about that it's it's, it's when that happened to me you, you get in this mode where you're like 10 years old yeah you're, like, you're just seeing you're like yeah, uh, uh, i have to have that like it, any semblance of reality or responsibility just leaves you for an instant and you're like i have to, it's half price like i have to have like I, there, <laughs> nothing else matters like i just need this thing right now screw my yeah. rent yeah screw rent <laughs> screw it all i'm getting I'll figure it. it out tomorrow yeah figure it out tomorrow i'll be eating ramen for the next month but it'll be okay uh, oh but yeah, my god bro. that's funny loki thank you uh, Polly. thank you for giving me a chance to say this and have me on real quick oh, man. man you guys are great man you know you're you know this is your casa bro you know that and well, thank you, you know this this is a we're having we're having a great time that's that's what matters that's 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 all that matters. And uh, uh, thank you, bro. Thank you. Um, so what I wanted to do is bring in a member. So what I'd like to do is put you guys, everyone except for me and Robert, if that's okay, put you guys in the green room uh, and uh, bring on this young filmmaker uh, writer uh, to ask a couple of questions. Oh, this is going to be great. All right. If that's all right with you guys. And we'll bring you back in. Take it easy, guys. Take care, brother. Great to see you, man. I have uh, not only a member of the channel, but uh, a dear friend of mine, and we uh, train with each other in martial arts, Robert. Oh, what uh, martial arts discipline do you both study? Um, well, I teach him Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu. That's my right. black belt. And sir, Reggie? Taekwondo. Mudu Kwan Taekwondo. Wow, okay. Yeah. 
Well, so that's, uh, just Reggie Official, everyone. This is Robert Meyer Burnett. Hello, sir. Good to meet you. Hey, Rob, nice to meet you, man. Good to see. You. I like the Raiders hat. Is that what you got Thank on? You. And like the Raiders with stuff. Superman. I love it. Yes. Yes. That's some good merch. Unapologetically me. <laughs> As you, yeah. you should always be unapologetically you. I love hearing that. Yeah. Um, a couple things. I heard you going off about uh fast earlier. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Right. Are you going to get Polly to actually watch him? Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, I think I think that the first five are you, they're really enjoyable. I mean, look, they're not going to they're not going to. They're just fun. They're just, right. you know, right. you got to be in the right mindset, though. It, you know, you got to know what they are. And right. uh, it, it, they're just uh, they're they're not high art. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, outside of, you know, anything with a cape, that's probably the biggest franchise that's been around it, the last 10, 15 years. It is. It's one of the biggest franchise. I was just reading about that today. It's definitely one of the, I think that um, Marvel is now the biggest. And then it, then I think Star Wars is second. And uh, I think Fast and the Furious might be third. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds about right. Oh, man. So I heard the point break illusion. Um, what? How do you how do you rate Fast Number Two? Because friends and I always argue about Fast Two, and I feel like it was an improvement. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> know, it was like wacky. A lot. That's John Singleton directed yeah, Too Fast, yeah. Too Furious, and I, you know, I have to tell you because that's where you really you 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 meet um, Roman and 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 Tej, right? There, yeah. It's, yeah. I I like, and it's it's Miami. Yep. So, you know, you're down in Florida. I liked Too Fast, Too Furious. I mean, a lot of people complain about it, but I'm like, I, I love the milieu. I love the Miami thing. I love, I I, I liked it. But then again, you know, I was really, I, growing up as a kid of the 80s, anything to do with criminal activity in, in Florida, I liked. Whether it was Scarface or whether it was Miami Vice. I mean, mm -hmm. that whole, the cocaine trade, all yep. of that. Oh, yeah. I loved it all. So, I think that for just the milieu alone of Miami and South Florida, I'm like, oh, I'm in. Are you Are you also a fan of the pest? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Right. Um, but but yeah, I, it's funny because people always say that Too Fast, Too Furious was like the worst one of the franchise. And I'm like, either that or Tokyo Drift. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think that's true. I mean, I oh. liked all those, and I love. I mean, I love. I've I have a. I, I've wanted to go to Japan my whole life, and I've never gone, and that's why I love the idea of of what happens in in the movie. I love the in in Japan and going there, and uh, it was great. But I, I think that for me, you know, the problem with again Fast Nine is it's just completely untethered from any reality at all, and even even they don't even make any bones about like, well, how did these people? How did they get here? It, it completely globe trots, and you're like, wait. How did you guys? Uh, apparently, you have access to military hard hardware and aircraft whenever you want it. Don't they go into space in this one? Or oh, I'm not going to say. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, but but I might yeah, allude to the fact. Um, let's just say if they did, it's yeah. so ridiculous that you're like, come on. <laughs> I will say that Machete in his next film is going to space. Is he really? <laughs> yeah, Machete in space. That's like, I, is it filmed yet, Tom? All right, I don't know what happened to Tom. What's that? You uh, yeeted me out the thing. I didn't <laughs> mute you, brother. No, you kicked me out of the thing. No, what did you ask me? I'm sorry. Um, is uh, Machete in space? Do you know if it's already filmed? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know whatever happened to it. I don't think that ever got uh, got well, uh, off the ground. Did it, Robert? Did you ever hear? Yeah, I don't know. It? I I know that. Yeah, I knew. I I didn't know that. I knew that they were talking about making a third one. I didn't know anything about it though. I don't think it ever got off the ground because I think the second one kind of. Sputtered well, at the box his, uh, office, but it's on Trejo's uh, IMDb. But I don't know what that means. But uh, I could probably do it. put it on my IMDb if I wanted. To. <laughs> we should try that as an experiment. Just for our name <laughs> in space. We're all in it. <laughs> hey, we're in it. Make up a name of a character. You know, and just put your name as, as part of the cast. I want to be well, none, Chuck. Just Reggie. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I good think to meet we're you, man. Seeing each other soon. Likewise. Yes. Yeah, very soon. 
we get to start working out really soon. Um, and, and he's got a short film, but we'll we'll leave that for later on. Just wish him luck, please. Please. They prefer vertically challenged films, Polly. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of funny, but anyways, no, I know. Re- Re- <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, you're the man. All right. Thanks, guys. All Take right. care, man. Nice meeting you. He's got two beautiful children. Oh, my God. What a great family he has. Uh, his father started teaching me. Now, now he's been now he's been teaching me. But since it's been going down, we haven't gotten together. So right. Yeah, but uh, I will be yeah. getting the the poke so I can uh, train with him, you know, because we it's like we've been missing it. It's like you know, it's like too long. Um, let's just read. I got one more. Uh, Tim's talk, and I know you sent one earlier. Thank you, Tim. Uh, hashtag <laughs> justice for Han. Rob, let's get the, get it going again. Fire. <sighs> You know, I've never seen a Fast and the Furious movie, and those are like some of my kids' favorites. What? I watched part of the first one, and I just couldn't get into it, man. Oh, man. No, I know you're, you're going to react that way, too, because you reacted about the same way when I said I hadn't seen any Bond movies either. But, uh, yeah. But, Bond, uh, speaking of, when are we going to get back to those? Man? I know. We, I can't do it tomorrow. Okay. I, I say I hit you up about that. But, all right. I'll take a note, and uh, we'll try for next week. But Yeah, yeah let's do it next week. All right. We've got to get good. back into it. Yeah, I know, because we got only a couple months before the new one comes out. I know. If it, so, you know, hope it does. Um, one last time, everyone in the chat have been amazing. I mean, uh, this is an incredible crowd. I want to remind you guys again that uh, we will be making the announcement of the date and time. And it will be on Midnight's Edges channel, I believe. Uh, and we'll work it out because we, w- we would love to have Robert. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, navigate be the lead on this but edward james almost has agreed to come on and do a reunion panel of stand and deliver or maybe we just have eddie by himself and we talk about his career yeah uh, so yeah that is the uh, little surprise announcement we had for robert i mean it's how amazing is that i mean it's so exciting and i'm such a fan of his you know and he's had such a such an incredible career and and as again, I mean, the first time I ever saw him was in the in Zoot Suit the movie, um, which I saw. I want to say I saw it as part of the Seattle Film Festival, I think, at the Harvard Exit. But um, yeah, and I, I mean, look at that guy. He's in in Mayans now. I mean, he was in the eighties. He was in Miami Vice. You know, he was in uh, what is it? Uh, not PSG. American Me, but he was in another. T- but the TV shows. He's been in series for the last forty years. He hasn't yeah. stopped. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, he hasn't stopped. Yeah, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, I mean, yeah. W- what a career! Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry that I if I cut you off, Tom. This is uh, no, no, uh, you know when there's a lot of people and a lot of you know important no, people, no, I, no. I get I get nervous. Oh yes, he does. Oh, are you talking about the shut me up thing? I was saying that because we we're like 30 minutes over already. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you know, uh, we like to keep the slant a little short. We always want to keep them wanting more. So here on the slant. Uh, so uh, Mike, we yeah you, you, you I just want to say bye to Tom and uh, to say bye to Rob and Rob. It just makes me so fired up that your first experience was was Zoot Suit because as a younger, thinner, better looking version of me, I I did that play. I oh really? Times, yeah, I was in a I was in a uh, a theater uh, group uh, throughout. Well, of course, I did in high school, and then I got to Stanford, and I was in both a ballet for political group and a theater group, and so we toured, and I and I and I had done that. I wasn't in either of the lead roles, but I was one of the dancers in the back and one of the other, you know, zoot suiters. And for the longest time, I held onto that zoot suit till dang dog on it. Duct tape couldn't hold my stomach in anymore, and I just couldn't get into it. And I had to let it go. Oh my God. You know, but but it, you know, I, dude, once, I, once I said, okay, I think I need a second roll of duct tape to get the stomach back in. Oh, okay, time to sell this. Into. But anyway, guys, <laughs> I'll let you in the show, and I hope you're really excited, uh, uh, Tom and R&B, because the way you guys did the last reunion was phenomenal, and I think this thing with Edit and it's almost is going to be great. And, Polly, thanks again for your leadership. It's a great channel, and I love being here. See you guys later. Peace out. All right, man. Take care, Mike. Good to see you. And we we have to say that this, again, is going to be a fundraiser for the Latino Theater Company. And our good friend Jeff Rivas is the one who organized this. And, you know, you talk about great character actor. That guy never stops working. 
as right. well. Um, so thank you, Jeff Rivas. Uh, thanks, uh, Tom and uh, Robert Meyer Burnett and everyone that's come, uh, whether you're Slantino or not, you are now. Um, so, so yeah, uh, you know, this, this, you have to, excuse me, we have to have you back, RMB. Oh, anytime, man. I'll, uh, it's my honor. I mean, and you got to come to my channel. Anytime, you know, you know that. Uh, we got to we got to talk some uh, some music. You know, and I'd love to just talk about. You know, it's funny. You know what I've missed in the pandemic? Mm. Uh, it, just driving. I w I was in Hollywood for the first time again in fifteen months. Mm -hmm. I hadn't been in Hollywood, and I've like lived not. I, I've lived in and around Hollywood the whole time since the first the first year I lived in West LA. Then I moved into Hollywood. I lived in Los Feliz. And have lived in and around Hollywood most of the time I've lived in Los Angeles. And I can't believe it was so – I just want to get Los Angeles back. You know, the, the whole city. I just haven't I've been sort of sequestered away here in the house in Pasadena, not going anywhere. Not that it's been a bad thing, but I miss this great city I live in. <laughs> you know, I want to go out and, and see people and, and have some good street meet at like 2 o'clock in the morning after coming out of a club. You know, and and uh, eating the eating a great hot dog with bacon on it or something, you know, just right there. That uh, I miss that oh. man. I miss L.A. Going yeah. to Lachma, you know, it's just hanging out. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm I'm with you. I mean, it's just been like going to see my mom, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I miss you going, know, which is great. Yeah. yeah, you know. Uh, and then we've gone to the beach a, f a few times with the dogs, you know, kept our distance, you know, that type of thing. But yeah, man. Uh, well, since that's that being said, we can uh, we can definitely have you over the house. You know, we keep talking about it. Yeah. Now we're vaxxed. I'd love that. Come hang out. Yeah. Romy's vax. I'm I'm next. So, you know, but I think we'll all be all right. You know? Yeah, um, absolutely. I have, nice, I have a nice big backyard. Tom, you're always invited. I got to get out of here. Yeah, I got I got poked, but. No, I just got to be able. I've been trying to save up for Vegas. I don't even know if that's going to happen or not. But yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, I definitely got to get out there. I know Andre talked about. Uh, uh, I don't know if he wants to be talking about this live, but <laughs> like mm -hmm. we we're talking about trying to go out a little bit early, just so we could head out there and uh, you know hang out with you guys and stuff and uh, whatnot. Is Andre going to be here in Vegas? He's going to try, and that was yeah. That's what we're saying. Is uh, again, I hope I like. He, I'm not talking about stuff he doesn't want me to, but like, yeah, we were kind of discussing getting a hold of you guys and uh, coming oh, yeah. out like a week early just so we could hang around uh, LA and stuff too and uh, see you guys and uh, all the other people that are out there. So, yeah, it'd be, that's hopefully in the cards, but we'll see. Well, and Gary uh, had, right. had sought me out saying that he did want a Nerd Nerdrotics, uh, an, an LA meetup. Uh, yes, yes, RC. Robert did say street meet after hitting the club. <laughs> See, one of the one of the yeah, I did say that. One of the great things about LA, I don't this is this uh, for New York too, or big, is that you've got you've got street vendors who sell their cooking meat right on on the on the street, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, sausage or or hot dogs or something. And I I love it. I love the I love it. I, you I, don't want to know what street meat means here. <laughs> oh. Does it, no, I, I, we didn't mean it like it's not a sexual thing. It's, it's you I'm know, it's, shit up. Uh, I love it, man. I, I, I love because, you know, it's fun and uh, it's it's you come out of a, uh, a bar or something. I always it's like, all right, we got to get some food. And now now the the street vendors, a lot of them have been replaced by great food trucks. Mm. You know, there's a lot of great food trucks and a lot of like if sometimes outside of concerts, you'll find food trucks parked. Uh, to service the people that are coming out of the shows and man there is some that's something that really over the last 10 years really kind of exploded in la and there's some really great like you can follow food trucks on instagram and you can there's there's dude and they had their the, tom not only their food trucks right but they're from different parts of mexico yeah <laughs> it's just insane dude. you know i'm trying to lose oaxacan weight, right? ice cream you yeah had oaxacan yeah. ice cream i mean and wow. Uh, wow. Yes. Yeah, some of that stuff. I mean, you could find and, and then yeah. you could follow them around and find out where they're going to be. Like, yeah. Because they have Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And they do. They do events like there's a there's a place. There's the Roy Rogers uh, West Wild West Museum. And yeah. during the summer, they, they put up this like giant inflatable movie screen and they'll show classic movies like Casablanca. And then in the parking lot, they'll have like 20 different food trucks. 
you know, and, and, and they'll stay there and you can go have dinner and you're outside. It's dog friendly. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. gentlemen, uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the chat. Uh, stick around, uh, you two in the green room and then let's, uh, let's do a little post chat. Uh, if you want to say anything to, to the chat right now, uh, please do. Cause I'm going to kick you guys out. I was just going to say, if you want to keep the party going at midnight tonight, episode three of uh, Rob Observations Midnighter. Yeah, yeah. So I caught part of that last night. That was pretty good. Yeah, it's it's I, I bring it's all about you guys. I bring I bring people on to talk. Tell me who you are, what you're about, what you're into, you know, and and uh, share share part of yourself and grow stronger in the sharing. <laughs> just keep your clothes on, because otherwise you're going to get Rob kicked off the internet. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. I, there's a delay there. If you're gonna drop trow, I can tell. Whoa! So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna zap your ass. You're out of there. You're out of there, man. Tom. No, but you know what? Most people Wait are pretty cool. Most people have been really cool. I've met some really. I've done this now two nights in a row, and I've met some really great people. I've had some great conversations with. It's tremendous meeting everybody. I love it. It's kind love of it. an extension of Midnight Metal. In a yes. Way. And Tom, what do you have going on? Oh, balls. Um, I'm working on a video right now for Andre. Otherwise, just whatever is coming up. I know we got uh, Tom Conkle is going to be on Friday. Um, yeah. What sucks is we'd love to get Robert on the morning show, but every day like we do ours, I think, is the days that he works on, on John Campia's show. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Just one of those things. Um, but yeah, other than that, just the norm. The, the basics uh we're just trying to get everything uh in order a lot of news dropped this week that nobody was really prepared for i don't think so no wow yeah and i mean it, and, and again I, I i i tried to catch everybody's uh take on it but uh uh yeah i, I gotta check yours out yet robert i'm the whole mgm and uh warner brothers stuff for yeah. sure. thank you gentlemen thank you so yeah. much um and thank you guys in the chat thank you to mexican iron man loki all the members that came on the Slantino Nation, all the people from the network. Uh, you guys are amazing. I know a lot of you guys because I'm part of uh, Robert Meyer Burnett's uh, community, and it's a beautiful community. That's racist to um, say you all know each other. Oh, wait, you mean, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm giving a nice poetic spiel. Um, <laughs> um, let me hit these really quick. Roger, in case I missed you, thank you. Uh, Judicon, for a super sticker, $3. Muchisimas gracias. Tambien Tim's talk. He, uh, there, he had an extra one. Hello there, Robin All. Hola, senor. And ultimamente, you had one more. I think we did do that one. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, mi gente. Uh, please subscribe to everyone here that you have seen. Uh, please uh, have a good, good night or good morning wherever you're at. And remember, wherever you're at, keep your slant fuerte because fuerte is strength. And just uh, stay strong, guys. We'll see you on the next time. Take care. Pass. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. The slam. The slam. All right, Paul, let's go.